When you were a kid and you still had a kid's imagination, did you ever make your own cape, get on top of your roof, put your fists on your hips, you'd look out to the horizon and before you jumped, you'd take your deepest breath and shout, I can sell this house. Of course not. Even I didn't do that. And I have a real estate superhero for a father. Didn't dress up like a realtor for Halloween either. I wish I had now. But instead of being the cowboys or astronauts we dreamed of, we all grew up and became what we are. Now that's a good thing. It's also a shame. Because way too many of you think of yourselves as just real estate agents. What if instead of millionaire real estate agent, Gary titled it, How to Be a Pirate. Did you really think all those books were about real estate? You were reading instead of feeling. They were about life, grand adventures of fortunes to be had, stories about chaos and opportunity, strength and vision, leadership and daring exploits. They were maps to sail the world, to explore and discover, clues to solve mysteries. They were autobiographies and memoirs of Gary and everyone he ever met. They were thrillers, comedies, epic tales, and legends of conquering heroes. Now those are things you make a cape for. Entrepreneurs can fly. We're 40 years old this year. We went and grew up, but we have to keep dreaming like children because children aren't afraid to fall. They aren't afraid to go to sea in a storm. Their imaginations are wild because they haven't learned to fail. They catch their breath in excited gulps and never stop moving. They cannonball into pools and they pretend to be pirates, just like entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs don't love chaos. They love seeing an answer in the chaos. We build businesses worth owning and lives worth living. While others simply play real estate, we bend the rules to the direction we want the wind to blow. We command the horizon. We lead an industry by going our own way. We train the best to be better and to come on board. And we leave competitors in our wake. We sell, we buy, we change lives. Tears of joy, shouts of victory. The dreams we had melt with the dreams of our clients. New keys, new doors, new lives, new memories. And every one of us will be a part of the stories they tell. The life we've chosen is a celebration of the journey from treasure to treasure. It's an attitude you either have or you learn from reading a book you thought was about real estate. At Keller Williams, as a leader, as a team builder, as a lever of legacy, you will be so much more than a real estate agent. There's an entrepreneur inside every one of you, an incredibly wealthy entrepreneur. Because as Gary tells us, relationships are the currency of wealth, and you're part of a culture like no other, with a network like no other. In Mark Twain's book, Life on the Mississippi, he remembers his childhood when he says, now and then we had the hope that if we lived and were good, God would permit us to be pirates. Who ever heard of a pirate asking permission? Hoist the skull and mustache. One of two things, you're either an attorney or you're a doctor. I always wanted to be an attorney to follow in my dad's footsteps. And that's what my parents told me. There's only two ways out of my neighborhood. I wanted to be a veterinarian because we had cats. To be a professional athlete. I was going to actually sell shoes. Or a movie star. Do I look like, sound like, act like an accountant? Really no. I ended up in publishing after I got a graduate degree. I don't think anyone wakes up and thinks I'm going to be a real estate agent. I joke and I say that I grew up here. Before I joined Keller Williams, I didn't understand or truly believe that I could go from zero to wealthy by being a part of a company. There's just so many different opportunities that exist uh, in real estate, but especially in Keller Williams. I've now been a part of home sales in three different continents. Learning how to build wealth in this company was the thing kind of hit a nerve. I grew up wanting to be a doctor so that I could help people. What I didn't realize is that I could do the same thing through real estate. I, I look at my life and my, my career and my kids, and I'm like, I look forward 
to work every day, like every single day. I'm constantly breaking through my my natural ceilings of achievement that I too could have that success. My daughter says to me when I walk into a room full of realtors, you're home. Because homes are part of the human experience. And that is the most rich experience that any of us will ever get to be a part of. I couldn't imagine anything else that I'd rather do than be in real estate and be here at this company because it's given so many opportunities. And I have the opportunity to share that with the world in such a way uh, that is so purposeful. There's a, a philosophy built inside this organization that people matter and that you should build an organization around people and succeed with them. Most people are pretty nervous about the next few years. The good news is, we are not most people. For 40 years, whether we knew it or not, this has been our guiding principle. Do not go where the path may lead. Go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. And so at Keller Williams, here is our mantra for the next three years. Thrive 25. Our vision is a 360 degree street view of who we are and who we can be together. You're more than leaders. You're world changers. Just because there are less opportunities doesn't mean your opportunity is less. We've built a place for entrepreneurs to thrive, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Now is not the time to hide in a bunker. Now is the time to hit the street and shift into overthrive. Yesterday is the enemy. Satisfaction is a leash. What got us here won't get us there. A ship in harbor is safe, but that is not what ships are for. We will not be anchored to the past. Entrepreneurs need to be uncaged, now, so they can rise up and pick bigger fights. Let your vision be outrageous, and let your people be amazing. This is freedom. We'll operate as a team of teams. Strategic when needed, wild when needed. Many opinions, but one voice. You'll command your database, command the street, command the future. Our goals for Thrive 25 are not easy, but they are simple. 100,000 agent millionaires and 100% of our market centers, netting a million dollars or more. How? Well, you helped author the answer in 2004. She who controls the lead, controls the industry. And today, we say that another way. Team Ridge. Providing more leads so our people can be more human, more often, with more people. Leads turn into appointments. Appointments turn into customers. Customers have closings. Closings become communities. And that is a business worth owning. These next three years are where we level up and come out the other end millionaires in control. This industry has come full circle. In the beginning, brokerages partnered with their agents. 
They stop. It's time to team up again. Ready, set. Protecting my time has been a monumental force in my world. It has allowed me to not only build a big business, but it has allowed me to build a big life. I'm sure you've already, you already feel like you're juggling. Maybe you're working a job or two. Uh, maybe you're raising a family and getting through your real estate licensing courses is imperative to the next chapter of your story. Or maybe your situation allows you to dedicate more hours to studying, but the distractions are still everywhere. Regardless of your situation, let me help you build a fortress around your day in a few easy steps. First, decide on what your daily objective is. What is the one thing in your coursework that needs to happen every day for you to move the dial forward? Now that you have that, let's protect that time. Find the necessary time in your schedule every day where you are uninterrupted. For you, that may be before everybody else has gotten up for the day or after everyone else has gone to bed, but find that time and make no exceptions on how it's utilized. This is your time to grow, your time to learn. This is your time to build something bigger. Once you've decided on what and when, it's just a matter of grit. You're going to have a phenomenal year. It sounds like over 300,000 in GCI, over 10 million in volume. The biggest thing, quite frankly, is just focusing on your database. Your database is going to be your bread and butter. Once I decided to, you know what, focus on the database, focus on influential people, create relationships, that really just took my business to a whole nother level. level. I'm done paying Zillow. I'm done paying Realtor.com. Like I am just 100% done. Paid zero dollars for a lead this year other than a mail out to my sphere of influence. Aside from that, I've not paid for a single lead and it's literally refreshing. Josue, great to see you this afternoon. Thanks for joining me. Appreciate it, David. Glad to be here. You're going to have a phenomenal year. You're going to you're going to crest it sounds like over 300,000 in GCI, over 10 million in yeah. volume in 2022. Yeah. What's what's been the secret sauce cuz you've made a business change, right? You used to buy a lot of leads Correct. and now you're you've moved to a database. Absolutely. The biggest thing, quite frankly, is just focusing on your database. You know, um, going through and, and uh, actually reading uh, Millionaire Real Estate Agent right now. I'm, I'm listening to it on, on uh, Apple Books while I drive. I literally have read about 55% for, uh, is what my Kindle says. Uh, but I'm re-listening to that first piece again. And so, again, even in that, I read that, I want to say, almost a year ago, but I didn't finish it. I started it, didn't finish it. And that's before I even thought about coming to Keller Williams. But I said, hey, everybody you know, swears by this book. Let me read it. Um, but it, even in there, it's, it's dialing in on your database. Your database is going to be your bread and butter. And I just got away from that. And I don't really know why I don't, I think, I guess every real estate agent says that there's a, a new shiny object. So we always get distracted. We want the path of least re resistance. And so once I decided to, you know what, focus on the database, focus on influential people, create relationships. They know they like you, they trust you, they refer you. That really just took my business to a whole nother level. level. And that's literally January 1, before I even started this coaching program saying, hey, I'm not buying any more leads. Like I'm done. I'm done paying Zillow. I'm done paying Realtor.com. Like I am just 100% done. Paid $0 for a lead this year other than a mail out to my sphere of influence, right? And or database. So aside from that, I've not paid for a single lead. And it's literally refreshing. Like that's the coolest thing I would say about this year, aside from the, the, the GCI and even the production, that alone, I never thought I'd ever be able to do in the 10 years I've been doing this. I want to pivot a little bit and, and I want to talk about, I know you're excited about our technology and, and being new to yes. KW, it's, I'm excited to hear that. Tell me, about, uh, tell me about your experience with our technology so far. So first and foremost, uh, you know, you roll it back kind of, it's a little bit of a backstory. So my database, if you will, was on a piece of paper in 2012. So I've always had a working database, was never really good, but I tried. And I printed out basically like blank lines from an Excel sheet and wrote people's name and number and address down. Then that translated into top producer, which is just god awful from a technology standpoint. That's like 2015. Uh, then I had my run with Chime, 
which was okay. Then the last part was with um, Inside Real Estate, who does KV Core. Yep. Uh, never liked KV Core. Hated KV Core. I, I literally despised it. And so the entire time I'm being told, hey, you got to tighten up your CRM because that's going to help you become more um, intentional with people that you're reaching out to, keeping a schedule of the last time you ha had a conversation, what that was about, um, you know, birthdays, the whole nine, right? Home anniversaries, you name it. That's a powerful tool more so than what your spreadsheet's gonna be able to do, right? So I was just like at a loss. I didn't know what to do. And I was actually looking for other CRMs that were out there before I decided to come to, to Keller Williams. Well, I get here. And of course you don't really know what command has to offer because there's like some YouTube videos on it, but it's not really like a deep dive like you would see on these other, like, you know, boom towns, et cetera, right? Like you don't have that stuff out there. At least I didn't find it. So coming here and literally sitting down with Janelle, I want to say for like maybe an hour and showing me the power that this thing has to offer was just life changing. Like it was just life changing. Um, being able to sit there and easily put all my contacts in there, uh, create tasks. Uh, it has all the stuff, you know, to put the information for your home anniversary, the birth dates, uh, primary address, secondary address, work address, like you name it. Uh, the possibilities are, are limited, limitless with it. Uh, that piece has really just changed everything. I went from taking notes about conversations on a scratch piece of paper that I lost and could never find to actually putting them into uh, command on my phone. So I dial from my phone. It asks you at the end, do you want to log the call? I say yes. And I have my headset on and all I do is hit the mic button. I just basically recap verbally what we talked about and I literally have it saved and I just click save and move on. And I can create all these lists for my call sheets for the day. Um, and, and then again, if I say, Hey, let me call you two weeks, boom, easily done within the app. I'm a hundred percent thrilled with everything that it's offered. And I know I haven't even scratched the surface. Like I still find things out daily just by kind of goofing around in there or by asking her a question and her saying, oh, you know, you can actually do it in command. And then it just blows my mind again. So uh, that has been literally life changing for me to be able to have that organized now uh, in one place. What's one thing that, that you haven't dug in on in command that you're excited to learn? Honestly, the direct mail feature. So being able to, um, you know, take these uh, postcard templates that I've made in Canva uh, and put them into there. Like I have ideas and I have some some farm areas that I want to do for 23. So I'm excited to be able to set the and literally it's I've done one uh, kind of like test run, if you will, like said, I didn't actually send it out, but just set it up and how quickly that was able to be done. It's just unbelievable. It literally like do this, this, this and this. OK, now you're ready to go. I'm like, what I would, I've been, I've used other mail, like, um, wise Pelican is one, uh, mailbox power is another, you know, I'm not sure if you're familiar with those, but those yeah. are tedious, uh, sites and software to try to use, to be able to accomplish the same thing that command can do with like almost five clicks of a, of a button. Uh, so I'm super pumped to be able to have that, uh, target a neighborhood, you know, be able to use uh, the last sold date, right. Which is another feature that I find really cool that it's inside of our, our technology already. I don't have to go anywhere else. Awesome. Awesome, man. Well, Josue, I super appreciate your time. Your energy is infectious. We we couldn't be happier that you're at KW. Thanks so much for your time today. I appreciate it. Absolutely. If you had a 250, 250 people or 300 in your sphere, you just consistently loved on them, stayed in touch, Ultimately, you're going to get referrals. You're going to do that. Now, just imagine that and just take it to the social media world. And don't feel like you have to have a massive following. If you have that amount of people or more and you just stayed in contact with them and provided value and, you know, engaged with them, it's inevitable. That's a lot of reasons to maybe get good at oh. this. Super excited to chat with Yanni Kiple today. It's an honor to be here. Other agents really want to look to you for advice on how to run their social media. That's an yeah. area that you're very strong in and that you work pretty hard for your business. What does your social media landscape look like that you're working for real estate right now? Really, the, the one word, consistency. You can't expect to stand out or be top of mind as we talk about if you're just posting every once in a while it's got to be a you know you got to be intentional i would say anybody that wants to start right now is go instagram initially right now i mean we we 
we uh, touch all uh, aspects of social media. Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok. LinkedIn is a big one. LinkedIn has, has really jumped off, I should say, in the past few years. You know, when you think about it, LinkedIn is where you would want to go. It is a social network for professionals and generally people that uh, can afford homes. What is it for your business that makes the YouTube very attractive? YouTube is one of those areas where you can send people that you engage with, whether it be Instagram or TikTok, to there for more comprehensive, uh, lengthier content. Like in TikTok, we send, you know, we, we direct people to, hey, follow follow me on, on, uh, on YouTube to get more information. Or, or you, can may, you may put a snippet of a video on Instagram or TikTok and a full or uh, a lengthier version on YouTube. It, it, obviously, it allows so for that. You and your team, like how many people does it take to maintain? We're, we're, we're obviously profiling a mature social media profile. Yeah. How many people on your team help you with this? And how much time do you think it takes a week to kind of keep this machine rolling? I have a social media guy that helps edit uh, uh, the videos that I send. Um, for me, um, it takes me about, I try to create two to three content pieces a day. Um, so that might be an hour, an hour and a half, two hours. When you first start, I wouldn't worry about quality of content, more so quantity, okay? And again, I'm not just, don't just post anything, but just try to get in the habit of being consistent when it comes to that. As, as you kind of progress, you start to, uh, again, get better in the quality of information. The first principle is be consistent. consistent. The second principle, like beyond the strategy, is focus on um, quantity over quality. And that's start. the idea is that you'll get better as you go. Yes. The quality will show up over time. I love the consistency because I kind of think about the people I've interviewed like you that are working social media at a high level I feel like this is a modern version of farming, right? It's yeah. consistency, it's frequency, it's all of those classic things that for direct mail or whatever, it's just happening on a different medium. If you had a 250, 250 people or 300 in your sphere and you just consistently loved on them, stayed in touch, ultimately you're gonna get referrals, you're gonna do that. Now just imagine that and just take it to the social media world and don't feel like you have to have a massive following. If you have that amount of people or more and you just stayed in contact with them and provided value and you know engaged with them, it's inevitable. That's what's gonna happen. That's the same thing. And actually more because you can you see everybody's on their phone every single day. So they see you more and more. What my goal was, anybody that thought of me, that saw me, initially it, it, it ultimately would think of real estate. Anytime and somebody thinks of real estate, they would think of yeah. me because ultimately it's just about providing value. The goal is you may not be in the market right now, but when you do or when your family does or whatnot, oh, I've seen Yanni post great information, provide value. And so you never wanna just post things that just says, hey, I'm an agent, send me referrals. You're just coming from a, from a, a stance of providing value. And when you go to our social media page, you'll see, like you can literally be on our page, and I, and I say this because I've been doing this for 12 years, uh, but like you could, if you're a first time home buyer, you had nothing to do with social media, uh, uh, real estate, you could go down the videos and you would, by the end of everything that you've gone through, you would be proficient in, in what it takes to buy a home or sell a home. Because right? I that's think cool. all the information that's there, that, that's, that's so the goal. education. What you're it's doing is you're educating your clients on the market and, and how, and the best practices around buying and selling real estate. If you're really gonna start being purposeful tomorrow, you would probably tell someone, we'll start on Instagram, should they start with two or three posts a day, just like you, you're doing yourself, or just a smaller goal? Like, what, what's the starting point for someone to start building? Uh, you know, let's, let's start with one. I would start with one post a day, you know? One post How do a I day. know what to post? Think about everything that happens in real estate. I mean, there's market updates. We, we do under contract or listing photos. Make sure you, you broadcast your successes when you close. That's important. Your sphere needs to see that, hey, you are doing things and they feel more confident. Um, uh, what's happening in your community? Just pr be a purposeful in terms of providing value. What things can you, would be beneficial for somebody to know in your area about real estate? There's, I'm gonna recap think, what I heard. Don't yes. hesitate, like you can go ahead and tell your success stories. Yes. Um, you can broadcast about the community, the things that they might need to know, 
And I'm gonna wrap up some of the other ones into, someone give me advice on blog writing. Just go to your sent folder and look at the last 15 or 20 questions you answered for your customers. Okay. We do these things called business spotlights in our community where we highlight certain uh, community owners and businesses. That's, that's, that's what real estate is. Uh, uh, you know, I have a motivational Mondays uh, where I'm, you know, that's part of what I do as well. So you start to, that's what I mean, when you, when you, when you start out as consistent and things will get better, you start getting ideas, so then quality will come in and more and in uh, and it'll kind of change over time. What percentage of your lead flow do you think comes from social media today? Man, I I would probably say in that forty five, almost half maybe, honestly, forty five wow. to fifty. Yeah, and you know. So you're looking at in your bit in the size of your business, you're looking at twenty five to thirty million in business annually coming from this effort. Absolutely, absolutely. That's a lot of reasons to maybe get good at this. Oh, there's a lot of people in that are intimidated maybe not you know not doing videos or social media but i guarantee you, you just start you just start and things build i remember the first time i started i was at an open house nobody was there nobody was there nobody was gonna come nobody did come and i said okay i'm just gonna make my first video and i remember just taking out my phone and i created a video and you know i was kind of nervous i was walking around the room so much that you know people some of my friends hey great video but I got dizzy just watching you because I was just walking around. <laughs> <laughs> but that that's where it starts. So I would say, listen, start where you are and just and just don't worry about quality of video. Quality, just start where you are and just and just be consistent and, and, and things will line up, I, I, I promise. That's right where we yeah. started. Consistency is the key. Absolutely. All right, Yanni, I'm happy to know you. Uh, thanks for sharing with us today. And I don't know about everybody else, but I'm going to follow you right now. All right. Thank you, Jay. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much. Self-doubt, in my opinion, is one of the biggest things that takes people out of this industry. And for that, it must be conquered. When I begin to doubt, which happens from time to time, I utilize the weapons that I've learned to help me overcome this battle. These weapons are psychological and spiritual maintenance. My weapons, such as prayer, positive affirmations, reading motivational books, speaking with my elders, and just looking over my positive affirmations and my goals help me when I'm trying to overcome these battles. I know for me, self-doubt is ultimately just fear. So I ask myself, what am I truly afraid of? I take a deep breath, and I remember that everything that I need to be successful is already within me. I just have to believe in myself enough to unlock it. Remember, your mindset will either be your best friend or your worst enemy. You have to find your weapons, your tools, the things that will help you overcome your mental battles. The key is to remember that self-doubt and fear are natural. And when things get tough in this industry and self-doubt tries to creep in, I ask you, who are you going to let win? You or your fears? When I started in real estate, I had just moved to Asheville, North Carolina, and the only people I knew were the ones who moved with me. My local contact list felt like it was empty, and I needed to find more people to do business with. I relied on using my hobbies, habits, and activities to make customers out of strangers and build a successful career. I took pride in being able to listen intently and ask intelligent questions to get to the potential client's wants and needs. Using forward conversations, which means family, occupation, recreation, and dreams, Care calls and gratitude calls help to stay top of mind for the people that I know and earns me business every year. People don't care about what you know until they know that you care. So in this journey to build your career by design, 
Make sure you create time and opportunities to build relationships. They will be a huge part of your success. Went to the restroom, came as an agent, came back as a team leader. One of the owners, she stopped me in the hallway. She said, I think you make a good team leader. So she's good at manifesting stuff if you ever need anything manifested. I do. I'll reach out to her and ask. I might need some help. So, so talk us through, I know that you've got, um, you know, you, you've, you've really leaned into this role over the last three years and you're having success and you're loving what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And I have, I have, um, in my notes that one of the things that you're doing is a guaranteed path to six figures. Can you talk us through or talk the audience through kind of what that looks like? Is that part of your recruiting? Is that part of your training with your current agents? What does that look like? Yeah, we just, well, yes, to both. I mean, we, we, we wanted to create a, um, a MOFR um, and something that, you know, to try, most people that we spoke to and that we talked to on a daily basis want to make their goal, their income goal is 100000 So mm -hmm. they want to make six figures. So we felt like we wanted to kind of simplify it. It's very interesting because it's, it's so, it's, we just, so, it's so simple and um, just getting people to buy into doing, doing the work and teaching them how important the activities are. And they're starting to really embrace it. But it's definitely attracted quite a few people to the Market Center. Yeah. That's amazing. Can you talk us through it? So for an, another team leader that's out there that, that's like, gosh, you know, I'm looking for something in the shift. I'm looking for mm -hmm. something to, to bring our agents in, something that's tangible that they can take and go do. What does it look like? I want to show agents have not, a lot of most of the people in this industry. What I'm, I've learned since becoming a team leader is that the coaching and training really doesn't exist. And so creating a business plan, I've, a ton of agents have told me when I spoke to them, I said, what is, what's your goal? Did you set a goal yet for next year? And they say, yes. And I asked them if they have a plan and they say no. And so I want to discuss a plan with them, simplifying to get that, them getting a six figure. So it's really just them contacting a certain amount of people on a, on a daily basis, doing one open house a week, and then um, showing them the simplicity of trimming the year down to 40, 40 weeks instead of 52, having them set one appointment a week, and showing them that they don't have to have a crazy conversion rate uh, in order to achieve the six-figure result. It's, it's, so that's really all we're doing is just I give them one appointment a week, one open house every weekend, and um, – I, I, I have them use a 50% conversion rate on listing appointments set to take in. And then I asked them to take in the close. I let them pick their conversion rate. A lot of them say 100%. So I said, well, let's just be conservative and we just keep trimming it down. And I just showed them for every um, listing that we take that we market properly, we should attract one qualified buyer. And our average commission here is about 5,000. So, or a little bit above that. So I show them that 20 transactions closed gets them to that result and they get to take 12 weeks off. It, it's interesting in my coaching, I find often that people think their conversion rates are higher than they are. And so the, the fact that you're in your, in your, in your plan for six figures, right? Your MOFR, the 50% conversion, I think is probably more realistic. And you probably, as far as if we're going on one appointment a week, you could expect to get one every two weeks then, right? To get it on the market. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So I want to make this really easy for for other team leaders to to follow. And so I just want to kind of tell you what what I took from from the the conversation and then say, OK, if we were going to make this a one page, right, so that a new team leader or maybe a seasoned team leader that's just looking for something new to do mm -hmm. could follow this. So what you're saying is you're basically taking something that could be complex, right, a six figure income and you're making mm -hmm. it very simple or bite-sized for your agents. And so right. you're boiling down the number of contacts they need. You're saying mm -hmm. one open house a week. We're going to base all of this on a 40-week year instead of 52 weeks. So the mm -hmm. agents that come into business that say, oh, I just want flexibility, they hear 12 weeks off and they're super pumped. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Super pumped. Yeah, well, I let them pick. I let them pick too. Like how many weeks do you want off? And a lot mm -hmm. of them say none. They want to work. Ever. I'm like, well, that's not realistic. So let's mm -hmm. be, you know. Let's and you have to take time off. Yeah, let's be realistic. So we use the economic model, by the way. We created a goal tracker and each agent gets a goal tracker. And to simplify that, we just have them put their numbers in. It's great because we create the goal in 
you know, and we plug the numbers in for them and just show them how to use it. Um, we simply have to go to the gold tracker daily, put their, their calls and their contacts, their appointments set under contracts and close. And all the numbers are already there for them on how many contacts they need to make. And, and, and all, I set all the conversion rates on the, um, inside the gold tracker. So it's already set for them. So can you watch in real time what's happening with this group? Yep. Yeah, the whole time. I use one, we have one for the ALC and then we have one for everyone else and, and um, everybody else can see. It's nice because there's a lot of accountability. I was committed to co creating a community here where, where, where the agents are as committed to each other's success as they are on their own. It's part of our MVVP here and I want them to be able to see each other's numbers so that they can go, hey, I saw that you're a little short on your goal and almost have their own 15th protocol that they that they can you know do with one another. So I love this. This is like this type of accountability is my jam. So I'm like, I wish I had this right for our team mm -hmm. or for our coaching clients. And so when I look at it and I say, okay, we're, we're, we've got the conversion rates built in, you've got, you've got a tracker for them. So you've taken the hard work out of it. They just, it's plug and play. They're, they're putting in their numbers. We're looking mm -hmm. at a 50% conversion. We're looking at that they would need somewhere around 20 transactions with what your average commission dollars are, which is 5,000. The, the other thing that I'm hearing though, is you've got a lot, you, not only is, do you have this, you also have role play set up. You also have consistent training on the calendar. So if an agent comes to you and says, I'm really struggling, you can redirect them to great. I'd love to see you in the mindset class on Friday or the mindset mastermind on Friday. 100%. Yeah. Well, and, and being grateful to be in Gary's mastermind group and, 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 and he said to build a robust training calendar. And we took that really seriously. This year, we started creating our calendar for 2023 a couple months ago. And so listening to Gary, it's in, in addition to having our support and our agents inviting co-op agents for our ALC and for all the agents here to build profit share, it's so much easier just to invite them, you know, to the, some of the classes in the curriculum that we already have set up. And also per Gary interviewing one agent a day mm -hmm. and asking them, you know, telling them we're building out our training calendar for 2023 and asking them what they think would be the greatest, greatest contribution to our industry and to their businesses and having them come up with suggestions. When a lot of times I already have a class that they bring out, I'm like, oh, great. Yeah, that's a great idea. Actually, we already have that. We'd love to have you be our guest. We have limited seating. You know, it's on Thursdays from this time to this time. And so we think you'll be able to make it this Thursday. Is next Thursday better for you? Mm -hmm. So it's it's interesting because I've heard, you know, clear, clearly Gary talk about utilizing the classroom as leverage, right? It's one of the greatest recruiting tools that we have available to us. I also have to look at this and say it seems so organized that I, it does seem like this would be leverage for you to make sure that you're in constant relationship with the current agents you have and building that those top of funnel leads for new agents to come in. Yeah, yeah well, it's, it, it took a ton of pain of not having it and not doing it that way to create awareness that how important it is. Mm -hmm. Gary's right, and <laughs> it makes sense. <laughs> I'll tell them that you said that. So Rick, I appreciate your time today. Thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget to follow us on YouTube, like it, share it. So that way everyone can see um, all of your words of wisdom. Thank you so much. Appreciate you having me. Thank you, Tom. The first thing I learned in this company from Gary Keller was build a database. So are you saying that it's as simple as do what we've always done, but do it in a, in a, a new tech enabled way? Yeah, it is. It, it, there's nothing new. Those systems and models work. We need to stop reinventing the wheel. You have built uh, a, a very successful productivity coaching program. And so for the, the broker owners out there, market center owners, et cetera, I wanna dig into uh, something that I think is fairly unique, and that is the tech stack that you use. Well, no, no it's just, um, I think technology is always important. Um, and you know, one of the things that we've really, from day one when an agent joins the brokerage, is they learn that KW Command becomes the source of truth.
and um, we incorporate KW technology into everything we do from the first meeting um, and all of our follow-up and stuff is coming from command, so they're seeing that behavior role modeled. And so it starts with having them get the buy-in to the technology that's already in place. Um, and over the years, I have worked with all different technology, third-party companies, from creating my own Google Forms and Google Sheets and hiring other companies and um, always looking for a way to help our agents get clarity on their individual results, their individual conversion ratios that would actually not be self-reported or it would be easy to self-report mm -hmm. and never found something that really stuck. You know, it was that constant like I'm running after them to get them to track their and report their numbers and do the thing. Um, and I said, there's got to be something better. And I was so excited when KW had announced that we're going to create this integration with the technology called Sisu. Mm. Um, and it is a data analytic platform. And we've spent months working with the KW um, tech team and the Sisu team working on this integration. And what this does is it takes all of their data from command contact activity log and all of their opportunity data, and it sends it to a centralized dashboard that they can know exactly how many conversations they're making, how many appointments they're setting, how many listings they're, or buyer agreements they're earning, what their contracts are, their closings, and it calculates in real time their commission, the company dollar that's generated from them, um, and all of that data is available in real time versus having to manually calculate it um, on a Google spreadsheet. It's like my fitness ring that almost gets closed every night and then I have to get out of bed and go do something. To, anyway, so uh, so I'm a, I'm a PC in a market center in Saskatchewan, Canada. I just made all that up. Uh, coach me, the, the model that you've built, I think is what we're looking for, the step-by-step, -step, I've never heard of Command, I've never heard of Sisu, I'm brand new to the PC role, how do I build the biggest, baddest, most successful program that helps the most amount of agents? Yeah, well, I mean, you're going to start with helping your agents build their database, right? And get all of their contacts. So um, the first activity that we do in step number one is have agents call every single contact in their phone. Um, start with A and work through Z, and if they're like, oh, I'm never calling that person, then remove that digital clutter out of their world because they don't need that there anyways. Mm -hmm. And clean up their contacts, have those conversations, and then get all of those contacts inside command. Tag those at the system, and then uh, we use DTD2, the Do the Database 2 system. You tag them with that, and then you stay in contact. Now with the integration with Sisu, as you log your activities that you're going to be doing, now you're going to see exactly how those contacts are converting inside the system. So that's step number one. If your agents don't have, how, how do we build a database? And they all have one when they walk into the front door, we get to help them understand that they have it and then empower them to make those calls. All right, love that. Now I've built my database. I've got my 500 people into command. I'm tracking, I'm doing the D2D2, DTD2, is it the, do the database too? Do the database. I'm doing that thing. And so, which basically means I'm picking two letters from my database and I'm lead generating from that every day exactly. or every week or whatever the case is. And so now I'm doing those things. What's step two? Step two is to really help build the pipeline. Um, and leverage the cultivate phase of opportunities where as people you're doing and talking to your database or you're doing lead generation to grow your database people say I'm interested in buying selling or investing or renting it real estate you're going to then put that in the cultivate phase of your command opportunities so you know exactly what that is now everyone has a different definition of when they should go in there um, but uh, our best practice has been within the next 90 days or six months at the most um, they would go into the cultivate phase of command so wait a minute i know i'm i know i'm getting old uh older and the first thing i learned in this company from gary keller was build a database mm -hmm. um, feed it every day yep um, communicate with it cultivate it you said Mm -hmm. and then service leads like this is that was back in the the early days where we didn't have all this interweb stuff jacob so are you saying that it's as simple as do what we've always done but do it in a in a, a new tech enabled way yeah 
It is. It, it, there's nothing new, and this isn't rocket science, and nothing has changed, right? I, I, I came to Keller Williams for the proven systems and models. I started with a different brokerage, and after six months, I came to KW because I came from corporate America that had systems and models, and I was like, I need that. Those systems and models work. We need to stop reinventing the wheel. Yet what we have now is it is enhanced and empowered, so we now have more clarity on what our activities are actually producing. So we can check and adjust in the moment and say, if we're not earning enough appointments, we're either talking to the wrong people or we're not talking to enough, and we can make real-time um, real changes that are going to help us stay on track to achieve our goal. You know what I love about this is we have gamified one of the toughest, most boring parts of this, of, of being a, an amazing real estate agent, and that is, and we can adjust in real time, like you said. So I can literally say, I want to net a million dollars this year. That's my goal. And over the course of time, I'm going to know exactly the activities yep. I have to engage in in order to hit that number. I'm going to know if I'm on track, off track, et cetera. This is, this is just fascinating. So closing thoughts or, or any other ideas to help us? Well, I would just say the, the really exciting part about what this CISO integration provides is, to your point, is you can know whether you're on track for the day, you can choose it for the week, you can choose it for the month, or you can choose it for the year. And so you can truly see where you're at in all the different time periods. And as a productivity coach, um, it's also awesome because there's a leaderboard and you can see how your agents are competing against each other for all those same time periods. And so imagine the fun and excitement in a market center where you have Sisu up on a big TV screens, you're doing a big power day lead generation time, and you're watching the dials change in, in real time for the day, and we're celebrating achieving those successes together. So this is where our culture of productivity come together, um, and we achieve success, and we change lives in the process. Man, I love it. You got me excited. And so uh, thank you so much for adding so much value. This has been Jacob. Question him at your own peril. Uh, <laughs> you for live from Las Vegas, where we bet on red all the time. See what I did there? I got even more. In. We're going to have a lot of fun, Jacob. Thank you for all you do, my friend. Thanks for sharing with us. We really appreciate you. Have a wonderful day, everybody. And don't forget, subscribe, hit the like button, or don't hit the like button at your own peril. <laughs>
grew our business, added our first buyer agent, just followed the Red Book model and started leveraging. Um, yep, pretty easy. And actually, going back when I was broke in 2004 and left to start my own team, I did hire an almost full time assistant, knowing I wouldn't get anywhere without leverage right away. She still works with me today. She's awesome. And so was her and I. But really, in 2007, eight, started growing our team, adding buyer agents, eventually listing agents, a lot more admin rocked the distress market, help as many people as we can avoid foreclosure and short sale, work with institutional sellers, grew our team, and then shifted quickly when the market went back to normal um, and really just never lost focus on listings, leads, and leverage, of course, and then dominated the retail seller market. Well, So how, how many people on the team? Now about 32, and we're about half admin, half agents. I'm probably more heavily leveraged than most in our industry, um, but I am a mom of three, and having nights and weekends off is really important to me. Before I had kids, I was working 12-hour days, multiple, you know, almost seven days a week. And even though I had leverage, I wasn't purposeful about it, and I didn't have much of a life. And I knew I wanted to be a mom, so I, I leveraged myself even more. And I'm proud of not just our numbers, but that I and my team members have a good quality of life. I have multiple mega agents on our team who make great income and took off one or two months, you know, in the year and we cover for them. And I think it's all about building a really big life, too. And I'm, I, I try to lead that and then make sure my other people do the same and not just make a lot of money. There's so many questions that I could <laughs> ask you. How do you how do you generate 530 or 540 plus deals with an average sales price of like over a million dollars? Like, I don't, what's going on? What are you um, doing? Well, average sales price is closer to half a million. We are, we do a lot of luxury, but not, not too much luxury. Um, I've just followed Gary. I mean, I was lucky to be part of Keller Williams, uh, what, 21, 22 years now, you know, back in the day, it was Gary and Dave and watching um, all the top agents talk about what to do. And I just absorbed and followed them. And I love what Gary says is that we are in a generation business. And sometimes it's boring and not that fun and really not that hard. And I think part of our success is I am purposeful about lead generating every single day from nine to 12. And if I don't, then I try to hop on and do it in the afternoon. I don't think a day goes by that I don't talk or at least try to talk to at least one or two people. Um, and it is boring and it's you know monotonous, but that's really our success. It's no secret. It's just that we do the work. We have conversations. Certainly things are changing. We're doing a lot of problem solving, having to talk to a lot more people in this market, but really just having a lot of conversations. And I always go after any type of business, which I think helps me plant the seed, you know, 10 and 20 years ago, I'll do a rental for you. If it's a bank, I'll do a free valuation or occupancy check. Just think of me whenever you think of real estate. And I think that's really come to fruition, especially the last few years. So nothing is too small for us. And, and one of our mottos is we really try to treat that first time buyer or rental client, um, just like a million dollar client and give everyone the same five-star service because we believe our currency is referrals and reviews at the end and not just commission. So what's your number one source of closings last year? Definitely year? Uh, past clients and sphere. I mean, we follow the 33 touch model pretty religiously, have since the beginning, which is no secret, but that's really what works. Um, we are big on video e-newsletters monthly. We do quarterly print newsletters. This Saturday, we're about to have a huge 350-person casino night event that we've done for about 12 years. Is one of our big events through the year. We do about three of them. And we're just big on our people. Um, I also followed my friend Sarah Reynolds' raving fan program. Anytime someone refers us, they go on our raving fan, and we love on them with um, a thank you and a gift, and they get monthly gifts from us. And I think just truly caring about people and doing the right thing. And a lot of that, you know, never turns out to a deal. But as long as they think of us in real estate, we try to reward that good behavior. And it's really allowed us to increase our referral. So that's definitely our number one source of business by far. The thing is being consistent and getting everyone in your database. I mean, that's the one thing that should be everybody's one thing, right? Again, it's a little boring and it's monotonous, but where they have one person in your sphere or a hundred, you add to your database and sphere every single week if you can, and then you drip on them. I mean, back in the day when I was broke, I was Xeroxing, you know, copies of articles and mailing it out because we didn't have really internet, wasn't that popular then, and just did whatever I could so people thought of me in real estate and then made sure to capitalize on every opportunity. And I think that's our real one. 
one thing. I think that's maybe a DC East Coast thing, but people want information and they want it now. And if you wait to close a business, that's considered delayed sometimes. So I think I've been ingrained to, uh, you know, response within an hour or so. And we um, just always try to respond to people within an hour if possible, always before close of business. So people know how important they are to us, whatever question they ask, or at least they'll get back to you later. So capitalizing on any opportunity, whether it's going to be, you know, lucrative or not, because they think of you and they think of real estate and never stop touching them. So I think the one thing is the 33 touch. So consistency is key. Add to my database each week, provide value and new information that's both timely and accurate, and then respond to any incoming leader call within an hour. Yep, we really try to. And then we've uh, layered uh, seller seminars we've been doing for three and a half years. And the last one and a half year, we do them every first Wednesday of the month. I do them personally. It's been very successful. It's increased our price range and an average um commission, if you will. And and it's just allowed us to, I think, differentiate ourselves as the experts and how to prepare your home for sale. We focus on downsizing sellers, which is what I loved what you said at Megacamp recently. And we're trying to increase our downsizing um, database. But we really have a demographic profile on our team versus a geographic farm, or sorry, demographic farm. And mm-hmm. our are downsizing sellers with equity or distressed sellers, really. It uh, doesn't have to be a short sale or pre-foreclosure, but anyone who needs to sell their home fast, we do instant offer and those type of things. And that is you know, what our lead generation activity is built around. And I think the seller seminars have really differentiated us because we're always no pressure. And every single seminar I'm doing my next one on Wednesday, we have someone who wants to sell now, but more importantly, we're constantly feeding the pipeline. And we already have stack of business for Q1 and Q2 of next year. So that's been great to layer on our 33 touch. What keeps you going this hard? Like what, what gets you out of bed in the morning and sets your hair on fire like this? Um, I want I want to build wealth in real estate and I want to work because I enjoy it, which I do now. And I have almost 100 units. I've built wealth in real estate, which I'm so grateful uh, for learning from people at Keller Williams of, of passive income. Um, and now my people building wealth in real estate is what really energizes me. I have multiple team members. I'm in many LLCs of multifamily with them. I'm sure showing them how to build wealth, our clients how to build wealth. We're about to start investor seminars as well. And I think that, uh, I forgot what book says that real freedom is having freedom with your time, right? And so it's really just about making sure I constantly have passive income. So if we have a bad month or I decided to do something different, then uh, I'm still able to support my family because I'm the sole breadwinner. Jennifer, thank you, thank you, thank you. On behalf of every customer that you helped, every realtor that you inspired, and here on behalf of Keller Williams. Thanks, Jason. Appreciate you. KW Commercial has been around for 15 years. In the past two years though, especially with the shift, we've seen opportunity. Opportunity to make change. And that's what I love about Keller Williams is that if you can dream it, you can do it. Alicia Shepard and I saw the opportunity to make a very big change in the commercial real estate industry that has been needed for decades, and that is education ground up training for commercial real estate practitioners. Anybody who wants to learn commercial real estate can come to KW Commercial and learn it. We are so proud of what KW Commercial has evolved into over the past year and a half. We have built an organization that is inclusive. Anybody is welcome in. We have the training, the education, the mentorship for anybody to join. It has broken the barriers into commercial real estate and attracted a lot more women into our organization. In fact, just last year, out of everybody that we recruited, a third were women. We're very proud of that. Those who come to KW Commercial from outside of Keller Williams and they've never experienced our culture, they realize quickly that we are an environment of collaboration. We offer the best ground up education for commercial real estate and we want you to come learn from us and collaborate with us. Our KW Talent community is geared towards people who either have a team, a business, or are looking to start one beyond being the single agent. We bring people into our organization all the time and Career Visioning gives us all the tools where we know how to hire them into it. And then what happens? How do we actually set this person up for success to move into the next role? As they begin to bring people into the organization, they start developing systems. And then at some point, inevitably, it all becomes the people. People are always the problem and they are also always the solution for us to achieve our goals. That's where KW Talent comes into the picture. We're here to focus on you 
as a leader and the people in your organization so that we have the best people possible in the industry. We're giving you hands-on resources at your fingertips to bridge the gap in between all of your KW learning sessions that you already know and use. We integrate tools from all of the MREA models, the one thing, career visioning, and your KWU materials to use them tangible in real life on a week to week basis. Our goal is that your retention is going to increase in your business, your team members are gonna become more productive, and you're going to build the leaders that will take your organization to the next level. At Keller Williams Realty, we believe that together everyone achieves more. And we know that profit and productivity grow when everyone has a chance to share in it. That's why as a Keller Williams associate, you can receive a share of a market center's profits or through Keller Williams Worldwide, a portion of an associate's royalty. In the process, you have the potential to change your financial future, all the while joining a global real estate company with agents who are invested in your success. Here's how profit share works. When you refer an agent to a KW team leader in the United States or Canada, and that agent names you as their sponsor, we share a part of the profit created by that agent with you. This is also true for the person you name as your sponsor. Profit share is a way for market center owners to reward associates who help them grow. There are also rewards for referring new associates to KW Worldwide regions. In these cases, you earn a share of the associates' royalties through our Growth Share program. As a new participant in KW's profit and growth share system, you have a huge opportunity in front of you. The power to create financial security for yourself and leave this legacy for your loved ones. The following rules govern the system and should be followed to ensure its continued success. One, sign your sponsorship form. Two, name a single sponsor. This is the primary KW associate who was most responsible for connecting you with market center leadership to join KW. Three, your choice of sponsor should not be influenced by anyone in a Market Center's leadership team. If you are directly referred by a KW associate, Market Center leadership is ethically bound to honor that referral and may not be chosen as your sponsor. Additionally, your choice should not be influenced by any promise of mentorship or business help, nor should it be influenced by the team you join. Four. No one can change their sponsor once a permanent sponsor has been named on the binding sponsorship agreement. No exceptions are allowed. We get this question a lot, so it's important you make the best choice. That said, if a substitute sponsor or an incorrect sponsor was entered, a correction can be made. Five, it's not possible to split downlines between two or more people. Six, Kickbacks between sponsors and associates are strictly prohibited and should never drive your choice of a sponsor. Seven, always do the right thing to preserve the integrity of the profit and growth share system. Your opportunity begins today. Once your sponsorship form is completed, your wealth building journey can begin through the growth of your own profit and growth share tree. By cultivating meaningful relationships and referring other great agents to Keller Williams, you will experience the win-win culture of Keller Williams firsthand. I started the week that the world shut down with COVID. At that point for me, I knew that it was sink or swim and I had a decision to make. I wasn't gonna let so many unknowns in our world shatter everything that I had worked so hard for. You did 353 units last year for over 130 million. That is quite impressive. And there are a lot of people out there asking questions like, how can I do that too? So I'd love if you can start us off with, tell us a little bit about you in two minutes or less, Stephanie. Sure. Um, so I'm a wife and a mom. I spent 17 years as a stay at home mom and kind of coming out of that period of my life, I knew that I had always wanted to be involved in real estate. So kind of put together a five-year plan, um, wanted my kids to be a little bit older before I jumped into real estate. Um, I'm very much a 110% kind of person. So I knew that I wanted my kids to be a little bit older so that I could give the business my all. Um, yeah. Some of my desire to be in real estate spawned out of um, my 
cancer journey. Um, I battled with cancer twice within the last 15 years, and it really just precipitated this yearning and desire in me to start checking off my bucket list early and, you know, tackling things in life that many times people look back with regret because they never did. Um, or, you know, uh, things that they, they wish they had tried at some point, but maybe waited till later in life. So um, real estate just happened to be one of those things for me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What a journey. And so I'm assuming then, Stephanie, you're dealing with such an incredible level of, of personal um, journey. And, and to take that and bring that into the real estate world, how, how did that happen? You know, you, you look at life differently and you have a new perspective after you go through something so traumatic in life. Um, sometimes you can take something like that and walk away from it and, you know, hide in a hole and, you know, look at, look at life through, you know, dark glasses. Um, I've chosen coming out of that part of my life to live my life out loud with joy and with purpose, um, you know, wanting to give and to serve other people. Um, and real estate for me really was about serving people. It's a way for me to connect with people. It's not always about, you know, finding a dream home for someone, you know, many times there's a death or a divorce, there, there's, there's life that we all go through. Yeah. Um, and so for me, it, it was about being passionate about connecting puzzle pieces for people and serving and meeting those needs. What a journey, not only for yourself, but for your kids. I'm sure it's been a blast for them to watch you go from brand new agent to 130 million in the Atlanta area. So you have to tell everybody, Stephanie, what are you doing right now that is crushing it and getting you to this level of business? Honestly, for me, the the biggest thing is communication and follow up. Um, I'm very much a people person. So Connecting with my clients early on in the process is really important. Um, very relational. Uh, I don't look at anything really just as a transaction. So um, as simple as that sounds, that really has everything to do with my success. Um, I'm working with clients now that maybe I started talking to a year ago or two years ago. Um, but staying in touch, the follow through, the you know checking in from time to time. Um, but not sleeping on anything. That's so amazing. And knowing that our core tenants, of course, are leads, listings, and leverage, getting to 353 units, which one of those are you crushing right now? I'm assuming you're not doing all of that all by yourself. No, um, I would say, you know, the listings are really what my main focus is at this point. Um, I just started um, in the business about two and a half years ago. Um, So I came in as a buyer's agent, um, working on a team. And, you know, the way our team model was set up at the time is you come in as a buyer's agent and over time, you then, you know, can start taking listings. Um, And just with the, uh, I guess the way that I'm organized and my follow up and follow through um, was given that opportunity after a period of time to take listings. Um, I love working with buyers. Uh, I would say the majority of the buyers that I do work with are coming from out of state. Um, I've lived here in the Atlanta area for about 36 years now. And having lived in different pockets of Atlanta, I'm very familiar with, you know, the, the communities, the parks, the school systems, the, you know, and understanding how people want to work, live, and play when they move to Atlanta, I can kind of help them navigate maybe which side of Atlanta is the best option for them. Um, so those are the buyers that I really enjoy working with. Um, but otherwise, very heavy on the listing side. I'd say about 85 to 90% of my business is on the listing side. Wow. Love it. That definitely allows you more time with those precious kiddos at home too, I'm assuming. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. So let's talk a little bit more about the model that you follow. So it sounds like you're really dependent upon the way that you do your follow-up. So can you walk us through what does that look like from step one to the final step of that client is ready to go and is working with you? Mm -hmm. I, even though I lean heavily into a CRM and I am very, um, old school and traditional. I love pen and paper. Um, So, you know, I'm using my Google calendar and I'm using my CRM, um, but I like to see things written down. I like to check off 
the, those boxes. Um, so I, I do have, you know, a handwritten calendar and I keep different lists for me as to where my clients are in the process. And I'll update those regularly. That gives me a visual um, so that each day I'm looking to see, you know, these are my newer clients. So these are the touches that they need at this point in the process. Um, and just the introduction, I think, is so very important. You know, I want my clients not to ever look at me as just a door opener or, sure. you know, somebody who's just going to, you know, write a contract for them to help them sell their home. Um, I want them to understand that we are going to get close and, and we're going to get to know each other. And we may be friends on, on the other side of this, <laughs> you know, when, once we get you to the closing table, um, which is very much the case, but that's how important the relationship is to me. Um, yeah. So I even kind of set that expectation from the beginning. Um, but just the constant communication, the touches. So, Follow-up is the key to your business is what I'm hearing and passion and drive from your family and what you've experienced in your personal life. So is there anything else that we missed talking about that helps you drive this level of business to your company? You know, for me, again, it was a matter of coming in, checking off a bucket list item, doing something that I knew I would be passionate about and excited about. I started the week that the world shut down with COVID. Wow. Um, March 9th was my first day in the office, and that was a Monday. Friday, March 13th, our office shut down. Um, at that point for me, I knew that it was sink or swim, and I had a decision to make. And within a matter of just a couple of days, I decided I was going to swim. I had worked too hard. I had, you know, fought to create this five-year plan leading up to that moment. Yeah. Um, you know, putting things in place with my family, working hard to get licensed, and I wasn't going to let so many unknowns in our world shatter everything that I had worked so hard for. So honestly, you know, for me, it's, it's the, the drive and the determination not to let something like a worldwide pandemic slow me down or stop my dreams in their tracks. Um, yeah. So that, that very much really has carried on in my day to day over the last two and a half years. Um, there's been so much of, you know, I don't know what I don't know. And so I ask a lot of questions. I'm not afraid of asking those questions. Um, and I, I, I don't know what, what the ceiling is of anything. You know, my director of operations kind of always laughs at me because I don't sometimes know where my numbers are, you know, where our team's numbers are. And I'm like, I'm just, my head's down. I'm moving forward. I'm working. Yeah. Um, you know, that, and that's kind of been my approach, but really the drive and the determination from my perspective coming out of my cancer journey and then, you know, being put up against a wall with the pandemic to make a decision very quickly as to whether I was going to survive in this industry and yeah. making the choice just to barrel through. Well, what an incredible journey, Stephanie, in just really less than three years, right? You've accomplished so much and you've done so much with both tech and sounds like some basic tech stack, right? Your your phone, pencil and paper. And it just goes to show for those who are watching that you can be anywhere you want to be in five years or less. Stephanie, thank you so much for sharing with us today. When you say 82%, that's 82% profitability. That is correct. This is really just being very intentional about where you're putting your energy and your schedule and, and just showing up and doing it consistently. And I don't think there's really a magic bean or a special sauce. I think you just have to like do the work. <laughs> So what is it that you do in business that you're absolutely crushing and you do better than anyone else? So when I first came back to Portland and had no sphere, one of the things that always really appealed to me were women in the service industry. Uh, my mother had been an engineer. 
Um, I felt like it's they're a little bit of unsung heroes. So what I started doing in my first year, other than of course open houses, etc., like everybody else does, is I started meeting with these women in the service industry for about half an hour in my office just for tea, not about my business, but just to hear about their business. And so what we started doing is whenever there was a request for something from someone in the community, um, on the community boards, through social media, or just um, around town, I would make these recommendations of these folks. Whenever I have a closing, I tag everybody that had anything to do with it, the carpet cleaner, the house cleaner, um, the window covering specialist, um, the if there was pre-listing prep, um, any repairs that were done, everybody gets a shout out, not only on my social media page, but also if I have a listing, I have little look cards all around the house that says, this home was prepped by Trisha Johnson at PDX Arrow. And so it became this network um, of referrals and um, it has now grown to a binder, which goes to all of my clients, which is over 40 pages long of people that I work with on a regular basis. So that's really how my business was built. It's one of my my legs of lead generation is networking. I'm recently the president of a BNI, so I belong to that uh, group and have for many years. And um, I belong to an organization called Mob, which is Mother Owned Businesses. And I'm a frequent special guest there for speaking, but also um, I show up every week consistently to all of my networking groups because this is part of my lead generation. Okay, so your model for building a big business is networking. And I love what you said. You started out small with something as simple as tea with the women in the service industry. How did you know who to reach out to? So I started with that mob group very early on, and these were all women. And so I started to reach out and put the word out. I'm looking for people to refer my clients to. Who should I know? And then getting them in for tea. And then really making it about them. Even in the BNI group, this is about building other people's businesses. So if you focus on being of service to others, that's where this all comes about. So I really bring that service-based piece to everybody that I, that I meet with. And then I become the go-to. Jason Abrams talks about this a lot, about being that go-to person. So my specialties are that I know everybody that you need to know, and I'm very data-centered. There's no emotion in the numbers. They are what they are. So um, this is why people keep coming back to me, is because to be that... Um, that person of choice for all of the things. And it honestly, um, I would love to say it was very intentional from the beginning. It really wasn't. This is awesome. Okay. So um, the very first thing is you get them in, and I'm going to use the sales funnel so that we, we really simplify this. So you get them in just to the table. You learn about them. Everything is about them. Yes then you're figuring out how do I actually provide them business? And you come from contribution by making it about them, helping them succeed first, and in return, then you're experiencing success because you generate referrals. I generate referrals from them, and I think just by always being active uh, in social media especially, Mm -hmm. with thanking all of the people that I'm thanking, people start to really see it. So if you look in my business at this point, every part of my business is really centered around my gift giving company and all of the people who provide the wine, who provide the the products. I'm tagging each of these people. Now, of course, these people do recommend me and they do use me for their own purchases and sales. But really what it's about is just really communicating and cross promoting these people in a very public way. And so over time, they're referring me, but people are also really seeing me very actively promoting other people. Yeah, indirectly, you just uh, mastered branding. That's what I've really focused on, is just being that person of choice for all of the people. And 
what I've done with the social media groups is some of those people are really very early on. Um, and at the point that I'm at now as an individual agent, unfortunately, I can't see people necessarily that are three years out, but they want the information and they should have it. So that's why I created this funnel of these buyer and seller classes for those people that think that they may not be ready right now. we we'll are do a two hour class every month with a lender um, and with an insurance person. And we cover these people that may be kind of in the beginning of their search, but now they're all in my command. Everybody is in command. Everybody that has signed up for the class, whether they show up or, can, or not, they're in command. Um, and so we build on that. We invite these people to our community events. We invite them to our client events. We're staying in touch with these people. So that becomes my funnel for times like this when the market has shifted and buyers are you know, a little less active, now this is really where you're tapping into that wonderful community that we've created. What's next? Is there anything else that you do after this once they go into your command, which is your CRM system? Is there anything else that you do? Well, we're in constant contact via texting. Um, I do use the smart plans. Um, I do invite them to, I have several community events throughout the year, as well as client events. Yeah, so I'm always trying to figure out a way to engage people in in the business. I actually um, have a listing I just got live yesterday from someone who knew me from Facebook and was coming to my client events. And when it was time for her to sell three or four years later, she said, you know, I've just been coming to your events and I love what you do and I love your what you stand for. And, you know, I want you to be my agent. Um, you know, the other piece of it, too, which I think is a little unique about my business, because I'm a I'm a huge fan of the models and MREA. Um, I decided that I wasn't necessarily wanting to build a team. And Gary has said many times, like, even if you're an individual agent, no one succeeds alone. So all of these people that I'm talking about, they are my team. I'm an individual agent that uses an in-house transaction coordinator and an in-house listing coordinator. I have another individual agent within the market center who helps me with showings. I have my general contractor. I have my gift giver. I have all of these people, my, you know, of course, escrow title, all of these people around me. These are my team. But the thing that's beautiful about this is that I'm able to run a very tight ship. I run it about 82% because I only pay per transaction and I'm not doing anything salary wise or anything else. Um, you know, Gary always says to kind of run lean and into the market that you're going into next, and I do. Actually, what you, what you did was one of the six personal perspectives, which you went from E to P. You went from being entrepreneurial when you first moved out to Portland to being very purposeful to build this massive business that you have today. Yeah, for sure, and I, I've taken MAPS coaching, I go to Bold, you know, I participate in Northwest region, has a, another event next week. I really try to absorb as much as I can um, from people who have been doing this longer and not reinventing the wheel. But I think when you choose your legs of lead generation, you really should do the things that you like. Like I like networking. I like being around people. I like that leadership opportunity, being BNI president. I like that. I'm not someone who is ever really comfortable with calling expireds and door knocking. There are people that are awesome at it. There are people that are great at converting leads you know, via web. It's just not my personality. So I stick to the things that work best for me. And if it stops working, like the open houses, I felt like over time were not my best usage of time, then find something else. But I stick to these three and I do them at a very high level every day. Aubrey, congratulations. 82% profitability, a massive business built through relationships, leaning into the communities and vendors can't do it any better. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate, yeah, I appreciate the opportunity to chat as well. You're leveraging all of the pieces that agents need in order to build a big business. Right, that and listening to a real estate agent on repeat in my car. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's. Th do you really do that? Yeah, I do. So you have the audio book and you just listen to it on repeat? Yeah, when I don't make phone calls or you know look for directions, I just hit play and I just listen and listen and repeat.
Why don't you just tell us a little bit about your business? You've got a pretty unbelievable real estate business. Well, it's all thanks to KW, actually. <laughs> I had my own brokerage for 15 years. I was completely on my own. I started in 2004, and uh, I got to the point where I wanted to clone myself, and I realized that I have to change something and uh, find a way of building team, and that's what attracted me to KW initially. And I've been with KW now for just over three years. And from being one person uh, three years ago, now I have a team of seven. And we're doing fantastic here in Libertyville, Illinois. So, so the numbers I have in front of me are astounding. 157 units year to date, like almost $30 million in volume, and what looks like close to a million dollars in commission. Yeah, <laughs> I so, don't so, really. I never track the money. I just go after you know families and helping everybody who comes my way. So money comes last. That's unbelievable. I want to double click a little bit on kind of how you got here. So you had your own brokerage for fifteen years. Yes, I did. And you came to KW in two thousand nineteen. And what's changed in your business since then? Well, I guess I was self-taught before. I never had the exposure to good training or systems or tools like command. And I, a very embarrassing statement, but I did not have a database till about uh, 2018. So uh, when I came to KW, I immediately start using command to its full potential. And, you know, since then, uh, I think the business has exploded because I learned how to do the business at a completely different level, yeah. Wow, that's unbelievable. So, so you had no database when you showed up at KW. What, how, what was your transaction volume like? How many deals were you doing before you got here? Well, I, you know, back, back then, just like right now, I don't really concentrate on numbers. I know it's a bad thing. Gary's probably going to be very upset to hear that, right? Uh, but I did about anywhere between 8 and $10 million in volume a year by myself. Wow, and now you're triple that. Uh, yes, I did. So what are you doing now, right? Your business has tripled. You obviously implemented a database. But, but what, what are you doing now that's working? I mean, you're, you're crushing it. Honestly, for the for the last couple of years, I'm just, you know, trying to serve everybody who comes our way. But I think that, you know, my, my business is repeat and referrals big time. And so we're just really, really trying to stay in touch with everybody and implementing, you know, clients events and uh, educational seminars and just be in front of people more than I was before. But at the end of the day, it's still referrals, it's still the relationship that I built with my uh, database and, you know, the, the way of nurturing it is through uh, command contacts and smart plans and, you know, remembering all the opportunities and those things. So I, I, I give it 100% to the tools that you guys give me. Well, it still takes a person to run the tool, right? So let's not yeah. let's not give uh, too much credit where it's not due. You like someone's still got to do the work, right? No one yeah. sells a house with, without a realtor, and no one buys a house without a realtor. So, um, where do you think that you're doing better than anybody else? Remember, you know, leads, listing, leverage, and wealth. Where do you think that you're crushing it today? You know, it's a little bit of everything. I don't think I can, you know, separate those. Uh, I, I really try to get more listings, but also leverage is what I've been concentrating on in the last three years. Uh, that's why I grew my team from being just by myself to having now uh, four buyer's agents and two admins. I just hired my first cyber backer like three weeks ago. It's working great. Um, so leverage big time. Um, lead generating, especially now the market is shifting and listings are obviously, you know, a target that I'm going after as well. Awesome. I, I, I love that. Um, what do you think, you know, you, you've talked a lot about, you know, not just um, the, the technology tools, which we'll get into in a minute, but really the training in the systems and models of KW. Like that's really what has kind of propelled you to the next level and your business to the next level. And now that you've got you know, six other people working with you every day. What's what's one core principle um, that you can document in your business, or that like your that your team thinks about every day? It's really just getting in front of people and making sure that they remember about us, whether it's a real estate related or just like a, um, a referral to a restaurant. 
that most favorable to us. It's uh, we every day we concentrate on being in front of people and building the relationship. Do you have a, a certain number of contacts or conversations, or how do you measure that with your team? Yeah, we we try to make twenty phone calls a day, and we now we start time blocking for that, right? And so nine to eleven, nobody schedules anything. We just you know, try to talk to as many people as we can during those two hours. And then we just see, you know, we, anytime we, we talk to somebody, we open the opportunity window in command and we start like putting them all in. I think it's, it's very important not to just have conversations, but actually write them down and uh, make sure that all those opportunities are there and we don't forget about them because when your business is you know a different scale right and it grows so fast that's one thing that you need to be very consistent about is writing stuff down and i think that's where command comes really handy yeah it's unbelievable opportunities happens to be my favorite part of command i think it's it's uh, we've all had those sleepless nights as real estate agents where you you wake up in a cold sweat and you're like oh my god did i remember to follow up with julia I know I was supposed to do that last week, and I don't know if I did it or not. And to me, opportunity just allows me complete peace of mind to know that I'm doing the right things with the right people at the right times. That's right. Yeah. That and task reminders, too, in the contact uh, folders. Totally. So, so let's get into the technology a little bit. You said, I mean, you're using command to completely power your business. What do you think are the, the two or three most important tools as far as uh, the technology goes in here? What are your favorite pieces? You know, I would relate it to the team, right? Because when person is by itself, it, you know, you don't really need that much. But on the team level, making sure that um, I know what's going on inside of my business with so many uh, team members. Uh, number one, that's my favorite, is the um, task lists and opportunities. So that way, when you hire somebody overseas in a different country, they can exactly follow your task list. Uh, for opportunities and know how my business is running and what's important to me, right? And do it in a timely manner. That's one. Um, number two is the lead routing. So when we have a lead coming in, so I don't have to think about who was the last person that got the lead, right? So I just put it on the round robin and I have two separate lead routing, one for um, rentals and one for uh, buyers. And it just goes so I don't have to think about it. And then obviously taking notes. So all those notes that can be shared with the team. It's awesome when you can um, open the contact and see the whole timeline of who talked to this guy or what's been going on um, and the, how the process is moving um, with their deal. What do you think KW has to offer uh, that, that everyone should know about? Well, obviously, okay, <laughs> training. Training is the, the best thing that could happen to any agent. Look at me where I was for my first 15 years. I feel like if I would join KW from the day one, I would be at a completely different level, right? But it took me 15 years to get in front of you guys and, and start using what you have to offer to escalate my business to the next level. I think that, I mean, it's going to sound very cheesy, but I, I truly believe that KW is where it's at. and. If you're a new agent or if you're a seasoned agent, you have to take a look at KW and what we have to offer as far as the tools and, and training. I love that. that we're, we're, well, I'll tell you this. We're super grateful that you're part of our family. I mean, it's, it's so awesome to hear um, just that you've had so much success since coming here and that everything you hoped it would be, it was, and, yeah. and you've grown from it. So really appreciate your time, Julia. Thanks so much for spending some time with us, and uh, we'll hopefully talk again soon. Okay. Thank you, David. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Keller Williams Luxury is a community for every agent on the planet. We offer a property program when they list luxury qualifying properties. We provide them with the marketing tools that allow them to market them as KW Luxury listings and we'll syndicate them globally. In the last few years, we've grown our KW Luxury community from 1,500 agents to over 12,000. And now we're selling properties every single day. In fact, on average, we close $155 million properties every single day. And of all the properties we've closed, about 18% were generated by one Keller Williams referral to another. 
and now we're launching KW Luxury Pro, designed for those agents who sell luxury every single day. And when they apply for membership and their awarded membership, they'll have access to a unique directory of relationships and referrals, monthly learning programs they can't find anywhere else, and events and experiences throughout the year. Release the thought that you have to be perfect to win. Release the thought that you have to be perfect to be successful. No one I know that is successful dotted every I and crossed every T. They failed forward and people were able to find hope in their failure. Perfection has never been the prerequisite for success. And no, being a real estate agent, it can be very exhausting. Trying to maintain your mental health can be very exhausting. Trying to show up your, as your most authentic self in a business like real estate can be very exhausting. Do it anyway. Know your goals are not gonna care if you're tired, you're scared, you're alone. You have to keep moving. You have to find every excuse to win and show up as your real self. Today I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about how I made money as a brand new real estate agent. So one of the first things that I did every single week was staying very persistent and consistent with the commitment I made to myself in building a big business and setting three appointments per week, no matter what it took, whether it took 20 conversations a week or 120 conversations, I was going to hit those three appointments. I actually had a little white magnet and I had on the left hand side, three appointments was my goal. And on the right hand side, I had appointments set and I needed to move those markers from left to right. And I would do that every single week. So if it came to Friday when I was in my mid twenties and I didn't have all three markers moved over, I would either one stay super late at night and not go out with my friends or go home early and wake up at 6 a.m. Saturday morning to make sure I hit those markers. And it's that consistency and that persistence that kept our team to continue to grow and grow. So you can fast forward now eight years and our, our whole team, now there's 30, it went from just me to now there's 30 of us and we follow a very similar morning routine. And now last year we were able to help 325 families and this year we're on track to help over 600. So if you ever are in doubt of what you need to do to succeed, just go back to the basics. What is that morning routine that you have and stick to it, stay persistent and stay consistent. The relocation community and the relocation department is a game changer for our agents, for market centers, the ability to recruit top agents from competing companies and brokerages, and also to capture the relocation business that we haven't been able to get in the past is going to dynamically change the lives of our agents. And that is ultimately our goal. Corporate relocation covers a dynamic spectrum of companies. It could be pharmaceutical, it could be military relocation, any corporation that transfers their employees from point A to point B, whether it's domestically or internationally. There are IRS guidelines that must be followed and adhered to, and that's where our community members are benefiting as GERTS relocation certified. As we grow and expand the relocation community globally, this will dynamically change the direction of KW and put us in that world and that realm. You know, there's a misconception out there that command isn't designed for teams. That's old news. At KW Labs, part of our job is to help create the tools teams tell us they need. And over the last year, KW has invested millions of dollars in command, including tools that help teams work smarter by streamlining their operations. And at the heart of all this innovation are Gary's proven laws of lead generation. Build a database, feed it daily, communicate with it systematically, and service the leads that come in. If you're not already using Command, you probably don't even want to think about switching tech platforms. And as a team owner, I get it. You're worried about disruptions to your workflow, the challenge of getting used to new tech, and all the time and money you've already spent on the tools you have. But right now is actually the best time to reevaluate your systems. You want to make sure they're optimized to support your team in a shifting market. Right now in Command, you can import your database, 
set up lead routing, generate leads at a fraction of the usual cost, nurture your leads, and track your transactions through every stage of the process. It's a powerful all-in-one platform. Many of our top teams have made Command a center of their workflow. So when you make the switch to Command, you'll be in good company. Plus, you'll have the benefit of our training team to help ease the transition. That misconception, Q. Not only is Command built for teams, it's the only platform that comes with its own user manual, the MREA, the book that built teams. I grew up in a really small town in Nebraska. So Deschler, Nebraska, population 800 people. I graduated with 24 kids in my class. So really small town. I don't think anyone wakes up and thinks I'm gonna be a real estate agent. I always wanted to be an attorney. I wanted to follow in my dad's footsteps. I took the LSAT, um, got a high score on it, got ranked the test and was able to get into Harvard Law and decided I didn't wanna go. I went to college in Springfield, Missouri and at uh, Missouri State University. And after that, I went to work at Bass Pro Shops. I was an inventory specialist, which meant I sat in a cubicle all day long looking at numbers and it was terrible. Great company, terrible job. Not really my personality. I left um, Bass Pro Shops and took a job at a business brokerage office and I was their office manager and learned how to value businesses. So I was looking at P&Ls and deciding how much are we going to market this for? Where are we going to market it? At that point, my fiance and I bought a business through them. So I bought a hair salon and it was super fun. Like it was, it was the first time I was ever an entrepreneur, right? It was the first time that I learned what it looked like to not work for someone else. I was pregnant with my first child and somebody walked in and asked if we would sell it. And I was like, yeah, yes, I'm, I would like to. And we were buying rental properties and kind of had the conversation with my husband at the time of what are we gonna do? Where am I gonna go? What's my next step? And he was like, what if you got your real estate license? You know, what if, what if you did this um, and really just focused on building our investment portfolio? And that was initially why I got licensed. I started as um, somebody's transaction coordinator. Eventually, the gentleman that I worked for then was like, hey, would you wanna help some of my buyers? And that was my first taste of, you know, really outside of purchasing something for ourselves, really my first taste of real estate um, selling to somebody else. I was introduced to Dan Holt, who's my business partner, by a, by a builder. And, and the, the builder introduced us and Dan was like, why don't you come be a buyer's agent on my team? There's a class in Kansas City and it's called Win With Buyers, which is a KWU class. And so I wasn't at Keller Williams and he sent me to this class and my mind was blown because the, the, the company I was at had no training. So it was the first time that I knew that there was training out there for a buyer's agent. It was the first time that I was like, gosh, you could run this like a business. And it was just, this is one class that's two days. What would it be like to be at Keller Williams? And so that was really the tipping point for me. And when I decided to join Dan's team as buyer's agent. I think number one, the success has surprised me. However, with the success comes something that also it would vie for that top spot which is how to be a mom and how to be successful at the same time. You know, I'm a single mom, so I've got two kids. One of the things for Keller Williams that stood out was the God family business. When I have to make a choice, I'm always gonna choose my family first. And the thing is, is that this is the first company that I've been at that was is supportive of that. I, I look at my life and my, my career and my kids, I'm like, I look forward to work every day. Like every single day, there, that doesn't mean there aren't hard days. It doesn't mean that there aren't disappointments or frustrations. Yet I look at it every day and I'm like, this is pretty, pretty fun, right? This is pretty cool. I grew up in West Bloomfield, Michigan. I knew that I wanted to make money and I knew that that was important. I just figured life would be better with it than without it. I was having a terrible experience in school. When it came time for school to end, which I could not have been more excited about, I knew I wanted to do something with people. And, and I had decided that I was gonna actually sell shoes. That just seemed like the next coolest thing to do. Hang out in the mall, hang out with people, sell shoes, like I was in. And then my mom, who has always seen more in me than anybody ever will, she said, you should really be in real estate. You see, her father had been in real estate and my dad had been in the construction business. And so she understood it. 
and she was a teacher. And I said, there's no way I'm gonna be able to pass this test. I'm terrible at this kind of stuff. And she said, you know what? Let's do this together. And amazingly enough, I passed the test and became a real estate agent. I couldn't have been more excited. There I was at 19 years old with a real estate license, trying to figure it out. I was at this company with these awesome gold jackets and I was so proud to have one. I got a, I got a job and I got a desk and all of this stuff. And I would just watch the top producer for the office walk from their office to the sales board. At that time, there were like these sales boards and you wrote up your listings and you wrote up your sales, but they never stopped to actually tell anybody how they did it. And so I went the first six months Months, going to the office every day in a, in a sport coat and not making any money. I didn't sell a single home in the first six months. And it was, it was really depressing and I was gonna get out of the business. I just wasn't having the success that I wanted. And then I had this amazing conversation with a gentleman that worked at that office. And this person said to me in a nutshell, forget everything you're reading, forget trying to have the perfect script, Forget all this lead gen stuff. Just forget all of it and simply go out there and connect with people and be yourself. And I don't know what it was about that day and the way that this person said it, but I took that advice and I ended up making $100,000 in the next six months. It was incredible. How I ended up at Keller Williams was right after that, this gentleman got into conversations to purchase the second franchise that was available in the state of Michigan. When I got to KW, I came to one of the events and Gary was there and he was justifying this idea of real estate teams, which for my market was a complete new concept. That just it wasn't a thing. I sat in the audience that day and I saw an agent named Mike Mendoza who became a mentor of mine. And I had never even fathomed that you could make that much money in the real estate business as a realtor. Gary was up there showing what a real estate team could look like. I didn't even know what a real estate team was. Went back to the hotel room that night and I just couldn't stop writing. And I literally drew out how all of this was gonna work. I went back to Michigan on a mission to start a real estate team. And I ended up uh, hiring, I waited for my two best friends to graduate college and then brought them both into the business. And we ended up working together, then we started living together. So it was work together all day, go back to this kind of like clubhouse at night and hang out. It was like the real world for real estate. And everything worked. It was the greatest run. I've now been a part of home sales in three different continents. And I've sold real estate that I never even knew existed. I've sold islands and mansions on the Pacific and a vineyard in France, and all of these things. Real estate is the ultimate backstage pass for people's lives. And the reason is because the real estate that they own is the set by which the entire play of life happens. And being a part of that is different than being a part of any other sales, regardless of how expensive the item you're selling is. Because homes are part of the human experience. And that is the most rich experience that any of us will ever get to be a part of. Anytime I've tried to get into lead gen habits, I've used a financial detriment to be my pain point because I just hate losing money. Um, I remember when I was a brand new baby agent, it was a hundred bucks. I had no money at the time and it was if I didn't do my 20 contacts that day that I would pay my mom a hundred bucks. When I'm building something, I have to put a little bit of pain behind it. Prior to coming to real estate, what what's your journey been? I'm a Phoenix native, born and raised, which is a little bit rare because everybody from Phoenix is not from Phoenix, um, but I'm somebody who still lives in their hometown. Um, had a little bit of an interesting childhood. My family went through kind of some rough patches, let's say when I was about uh, nine or 10. Um, and we kind of experienced homelessness in and out of a few years, um, which was, it's funny because when I look back to that, it was so different. Like I can appreciate and uh, understand where I came from. But at the time yeah. it was more like living that teenage life where it's like, I don't want my friends to not know like where we are or whatever, you know, it was just like living that through a kid's life. My freshman year in high school, my mom was able to get us into our first apartment. Um, and so we kind of got to build this life from there. That's amazing. So I assume that home ownership is something that, that's extra special to you. It has extra meaning to help people find their homes. 
It does. And it's something that like, I think it really worked hand in hand because of my age. My database has always been really young. Um, and so this idea of home ownership at a young age was an even cooler way to go about it. So my mom bought her house. But what I didn't mention is my husband and I, we bought ours about two months before her. And it was a few blocks apart. So I got to see what it's like to help somebody who was in their 50s buy their first home and then someone who was 25 buy their first home. And like that at the same time was really cool to be able to understand, you know, everyone's really going through the same thing. A lot of people buying their first home don't really understand how possible it is. And that's very important to me to be able to bring that to people. That's wonderful. Uh, and, and how powerful. Um, well, let's let's speed ahead to your to where your business is right now, uh, and and talk about what you're doing just uh, on on an incredible level. What does your actual system look like? The actual system looks every like everybody being on the quarterly smart plan. In the morning, when I open up Command, it shows me the 15-ish people that I'm supposed to talk to that day. Depending on the quarter, I alter what my communication is. So frankly, they're not all phone calls. Um, I'll get to how I touch them in different ways separately, but they're not all phone calls for my quarterly touch. Um, they're really a combination of text, email, and call. Now, the message is what changes. Q1 is Happy New Year. Checking in, how was your holiday season? Can you believe we're in a new year? That kind of a thing. Q2 is where I'm really coming at them from a real estate message. So that's updating them on what's going on in the market right now. Um, what's going on with buyers and sellers so I can really try to tie people down to an appointment. I've got a link to my calendar in there where I'm asking people, hey, if you know of someone, click here. Um, and so that one's a little bit more businessy driven. And then we go into Q3 where I'm gonna swing back around to a little bit more of an emotional connection. Just checking in, how's your summer going? What have you been up to? And just trying to connect in that way that doesn't come as naturally to me. Um, and then Q4, most of the time we're hitting them twice. Um, and so sometimes it's going to be a, um, uh, that back to that business conversation. Here's where the year is at. Here's where we're wrapping up at that kind of a thing. But it's also going to be, uh, typically a gratitude message between November and December. And so sometimes I'm combining those two worlds apart or together, but sometimes I'm pulling them apart and making those two separate touches. Uh, but when the quarterly kind of thing pops up, whatever I'm talking about at that moment, that's what the conversation is. So that's how I systemize that quarterly piece of it. And I heard you say, so essentially you're, five touches a year is what you're doing with, with everybody in your database at a minimum. At uh, not even sort of close to minimum. So that's what I use the quarterly smart plan for. That would be like very baby step one. Um, step two is going to be what emails are they receiving from me? Everyone in the database is going to be in our general email kind of bucket that we run um, that is essentially more like, if I think back to like the newsletter type emails, but much more boiled down. Anyone we've got an address for is going to be on neighborhood smart plans. Um, we host a few different events a year. And each year we mix it up a little bit, but some kind of consistent winners we have is the movie event. The cost, like ROI on that is awesome and it makes for an easy win for um, either if we're going to go like a kid focus with a kid movie or we've done Guardians of the Galaxy and so like there's a lot of grown-ups who come and are all in on that. I call them grown-ups, my friends. Um, but so we can do movie <laughs> events. Um, we do a big pie giveaway every year. Um, we do typically some sort of sporting event, at least one, but sometimes two. So the last few years in a row, we've been renting out a big chunk of seats for the Suns games. I'm a diehard Suns fan, and so we like to bring our top people to that. Um, we've done a Cardinals game. That one's a lot more expensive. Um, and so now what we do is we'll rent out a section of a local bar where they're playing one of the Cardinals games. And so we'll bring balloons and decoration, and we'll treat everyone to drinks and food and stuff like that. So all those events have their own touch campaign associated with them. And of course, once they've RSVP'd, then they get the touches associated with that or two reminders ahead of time. Sometimes that's text, sometimes it's email. Um, and then they're also going to get the after event communication. So to summarize so what we've talked about so far with your, your touch campaign. So you do your quarterly calls, uh, but you actually add an extra one at the end of the year. So five calls a year. We've also talked through your email plan. And so you do two a month at least. Uh, so 24 emails a year. What else? 
we're really focused on trying to celebrate occasions that their real estate agent probably would not be inserting themselves into. So we find out a client's getting married, we try to find their wedding registry, send them something that maybe somebody didn't get them. Um, if we have someone who just got a new job or something, maybe we're sending them crumble cookies in the mail so that way they can get a little sweet treat. Um, flowers for a variety of occasions. When we have baby announcements, then maybe that's sending a onesie or something like that. We really want to stand out in a way that, I just remember when I was pregnant, getting a gift from someone that was like, not at a shower, because it's really overwhelming, um, that really just stands out in my mind. And so I wanted to be that for other people. And so finding unique ways where we can gift give. Our goal is five a month. What other technology uh, uh, tools do you just use naturally uh, at any part of your business? Uh, so maybe that's the social media pieces. Maybe it's uh, uh, a separate uh, tool that plugs into your database. How we're integrating other stuff with command is probably not as stellar as I'm sure other agents are doing. I always laughingly say I'm the worst millennial you'll ever meet. I hate getting a new phone. I don't want to shop for technology. It took my assistant two years to convince me to download the Starbucks app because I just don't like downloading apps. So I'm not really the greatest person about technology. Now I'm certain we're underutilizing command. And yet, what we're utilizing command for checks every box that I need. For example, we could be using designs at a higher level. And I'm aware that we could be using designs at a higher level. Um, but we don't have to design as many things, right? We're a very face-to-face -face, um, business. And so it isn't something that we've had to put a lot of energy and effort into. Outside of command, my absolute favorite tool is another KW connection that we have, which would be the KW link through Gmail. I know that's such a simple thing, but Gmail's extensions that it offers makes my life a lot easier. For social media, we're on Facebook and Instagram. Um, as I have gotten older, I have moved away from Facebook and towards Instagram. And so I would say my agent database is in Facebook. And since we do so much agent referral, I work to continue to have that be stimulating in some capacity because I want to make sure those agents don't forget about me. But I would say more, my Instagram is a lot more database driven of who's around it. And I would say that's probably our primary lever. My goal is for people to never forget I'm a real estate agent, but to be me. So it features, frankly, what I would consider to be a pretty messy life. Um, we've I've posted ridiculous things my kids have said or done or whatever the case is, because to me, that's funny. Um, and being authentic is really important to me. So I just show what my real life looks like. I also am very purposeful about having a fun life. So I go on a lot of trips and I do things that are really important to my husband and I. And so I share that kind of stuff too. And so while I say like, I show my messy life, it is very authentic and I do have a lot of fun. And so I think sometimes that might look overly polished, but that's because I work really hard to have a life that I'm proud of. I love that. And I mean, that's a part of our mission statement, right? Uh, so uh, that's wonderful. Well. I mean, this has been amazing. For everybody watching, uh, you know, we're so glad that you tuned in. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel so you can find out more about amazing people like Kelly Henderson here. Thank you for having me, Meredith. Thanks so much, Kelly. I grew up mostly in Kansas City, although uh, I moved all around the country as a, as a child. And people's first question to me was, oh, were your parents in the military? Unfortunately, uh, my father was in the military, uh, but that's not why we moved. We were uh, living in abject poverty, I think is the best way to describe it, including living in a car for a short period of time. And so uh, I grew up, went to 11 different schools and and constantly moving uh, from place to place. And so I went to high school in Kansas City, so that's kind of where I talk about being from. One of the ways that I found to get out of the house and to be completely transparent, uh, if you join the basketball team, you got a free warm-up suit. And coming from a house where my mom or my grandmother might have made our own clothes for a long time, I thought it was the coolest thing ever to get the super neat Nike warm-up suit. And so I started playing sports just for the free clothes. And that led to five sports in high school, three in college, and ultimately it was how I paid my way through college. But I also grew up thinking there's only, there's only two ways out of my neighborhood. One is uh, I could do some things that are illegal and I didn't want to do that. My, my Southern Baptist background wouldn't want to do that. And the other was to be a professional athlete. 
and uh, and that or a movie star or right it, it had to be one extreme or the other ironically I went to college to be a teacher ultimately and and I went to four different colleges before I, I uh, graduated with a degree and I remember uh, the the uh, job fair at my school coming by and talking about all the different vocations and I had just uh, filed my taxes from being a bartender uh, and I had made more as a bartender part-time than what the state of Missouri was paying for a full-time teacher. And so I thought to myself, well, where else could I use teaching skills and, and maybe make a career out of it? Late night TV, as often times happens, uh, there's a passive income infomercial on, on how you can just buy real estate and never have to work again. It's going to be amazing. And so uh, I started buying rental properties, failed at that miserably, lost all my money. And and then realized it must be an advantage to having a real estate license. For a very short time, I joined uh, I, I joined another real estate company uh, because there was no Keller Williams where I was from. And in very short order, we got recruited to a Keller Williams. And I didn't know the differences in real estate at the time. Honestly, the only reason I got my real estate license was so that I could earn uh, more of the commission on properties that I bought. But but an amazing thing happened. I got really good at finding great investment deals even though i had no money and suddenly i became very popular because it turns out that lots of people like to make lots of money and the hard part is not finding the money the hard part is finding the great deal so i inadvertently unassumingly got good at finding great deals and then i became very popular among the investors and off took my real estate practice i could teach i could use my teaching background to get more listings uh become an agent i could be a team leader uh, ultimately, I could be a regional director. I could be a teacher. Other people would hire me to come teach. And so I really uh, am a teacher at heart. And it's what I love to do the most. And it's what it's what drives me. If I could take me by the collar at 26 years old, I would say, don't be afraid of failure. In fact, everything great in your life is going to come from you failing. So just get it over with. Just get through it and fail faster. Because if there's anything I wish I would have done, it would it would have been to fail faster and learn. Just learn, 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 learn. This, this is more of a journey of personal development than it was wealth building. And oh, by the way, along the way, I got to learn and make mistakes and, and do all those things. And it's what I've loved about my journey. I grew up in Memphis, Tennessee. My whole family is from Mississippi and my parents met there. So like I was born and raised, even went to the University of Memphis. And it's great because it was a big city, but all of my relatives had dairy farms. So summer camp for me was going to my uncle uh, James Royce's dairy farm and baling hay and driving when you're like 11 years old, which is what you get to do in the country. I was kind of a daydreamer. So I think the first notion of something I would dream about doing was being a writer, but a fiction writer. Because books were a big deal for me. I ended up in publishing after I got a graduate degree. Um, uh, met my wife there, we quit our jobs, went backpacking and ended up landing in Austin, Texas. We knew no one in Austin, we did not have jobs, and we just started over from New York City. And I applied to three jobs. One was at GSDNM to be a copywriter. One was to be a writer at a place that chased deadbeat dads. I can't remember the name of it. And I applied to be a newsletter writer here at KW. But it was maybe two years into my KW career, I found out that Gary was writing a book. There was a designer named Brad, had it up on his screen. It said, no one succeeds alone. That book was a notion all the way back then. And uh, I said, are you freelancing? So I just assumed like I was doing books on the side and you know keeping my contacts alive. And he goes, no, Dave and Gary are writing a book. Back then there were only, I don't know, two or three dozen employees at KW. So I ran into Gary later that day and I just said, I hear you're writing a book. Do you remember I used to work at HarperCollins? And that's what started you know, in my publishing career here. He didn't clearly didn't remember, but he called me into his office, laid out a vision for writing 13 books, asked me uh, what I thought of the idea of the millionaire real estate agent. I asked him a few questions and told him I thought it might sell 50,000 copies. Of course, it went on to sell 1.5 million, so I was a little off there, but that conversation, he took me through the hiring process again and uh, we started writing together within a month of that day. I got my license, I wanna say like in 2006 or 2007 to get referrals, and it wasn't that hard. I was like, okay, this is interesting. Now I know how to compute the square feet of concrete in a driveway. I'll never use that again, but it was interesting. 
But that started a conversation with my wife. So we had started investing after we wrote The Millionaire Real Estate Investor. We had two kids in that period of time and she was staying at home to be with them. She was also managing our rental properties and she did a couple of flips. And I said, please, please get your real estate license. You're really good at this. I could tell from the, how much fun she had flipping the houses and doing all that work. I was like, you understand real estate at a high level. I think you'd be a great real estate agent. So that's how she started. She built her business really fast. And you know, today she's in, I don't know, the top 250 teams in the country. We were investors first and then real estate sales followed. I'm a French English major. Like I was, did not think finance or anything to do with it would be something that would be available to me. I would just get a job, earn a salary like my dad and retire someday. But learning how to build wealth in this company was the thing that really kind of hit a nerve. So I chose to stay here and work. My wife chose to start that business, but we own, I don't know, 11 businesses now. And I think it's mostly because of the mindset that happens not just in real estate, but in this building. Like we are very entrepreneurial and they encourage it. A wise person once said, if you love something enough, set it free. If it comes back, it's meant to be. More people choose to come back to Keller Williams than any company in art industry. We went to a much, much smaller company that came back. Sometimes we feel like the grass is greener and it's really not. I did come back. It was time for me to come back to Keller Williams. I joined Keller Williams for the second time. I just started to miss that feeling of having really solid relationships. I think people leave Keller Williams because they don't and understand the full opportunity. The fact that we're the largest brokerage in the world is opportunity for everybody. Keller Williams had the tools and the models to allow us to invest into ourselves and our business. And being able to plug into the training in just a few short months has been absolutely priceless. The culture is the heartbeat of the company. We're not just here to take, we're here to give back. It's something that I've been able to find anywhere else. If you want to be an entrepreneur, this is where you're going to be. Welcome home to Keller Williams. My name is Jason Abrams. I'm the head of industry and learning at Keller Williams. And here was the question, Jason, what are the best tricks for new real estate agents? I love it. Friends, it isn't a trick, but here's what you need to do. Number one, you need to know how many people you need to have in your database. Our research shows you need 201 plus people. Meaning, if you have 201 plus people in your database and you follow up with those people at a minimum, call it 36 times over the course of the year, you're probably going to make $100,000 or more. So depending on how much you want to make, you can sort of use that ratio. If you don't have that many, then you need to do more things to meet more people. If you do have that many, then you need to do more things to get in better contact and communication with those people. So if you have 201 plus, here's the hack. You should be doing at least four client events a year. I'd make some of them digital. I'd make some of them physical. If you don't have enough people in, then you got to wake up every day and ask the question, how do I get to 201 plus? Friends, that's the best hack because it's based on best practices. Good luck. Go get them. We did hundreds and hundreds of interviews with the top producers in the industry. And what we found out is something that you all already knew, which is you do things to grow your business and run your business. And when you do the right things in the right order, that's when fabulous things happen and your businesses get bigger. So we made a list of all the hows that you all do. And then we took that list and we said, okay, Let's make a book. And in this book, we said, well, how would you do all of that stuff in command? But not just command. We looked at all of the CRMs that were out there so that we understood the differences. We numbered those sections and we labeled those sections so that when you sit down to try to do one of these things, the hunt is over. We're releasing it all to you right now.
Some of us have a harder time taking tests and some of us are great taking tests. Just remember, don't give up. So let's talk about a few ways that you can plan to succeed. My favorite quote since getting into real estate is fail to plan, plan to fail. So step number one, studying. It is so important to study. Everyone absorbs information differently, whether that be flashcards, creating your own acronyms, writing it over and over again are just a few ways. Number two, affirmations. As you've learned now, positive mindset is everything. Making sure that you tell yourself something positive every day will change your mind. Lastly, a great night's sleep. When you get a great night's sleep, you feel better, you think better, and you know you can conquer the day. So make sure to catch those Zs. I'm going to tell you a little secret. I failed my exam multiple times. I did not give up, and real estate has changed my life. In my first year, I became what we call Rookie of the Year in my office. I also closed over 30 homes, and most importantly, I got my family debt-free. If you fail your test once, twice, or how many times, don't give up. I got my real estate license, and I've never looked back, and it has truly changed my life. What compelled me to join KWYP and build the community was the opportunities that this Young Professionals community provided. So I actually started at the front desk at a Keller Williams office in Minnesota and joined KWYP shortly after that. That helped accelerate my career to different opportunities at the Market Center to eventually get me to where I am today as the Young Professionals Community Manager. There's opportunities, whether you're interested in growing a team or becoming part of Market Center leadership or even building your investment portfolio. We talk a lot about wealth building and investing and how we can create opportunities that'll help us have that financial freedom so we can take on more opportunities and ultimately live that life by design. We have lots of different networking opportunities for young professionals to come together, share what they're experiencing in the market, share their goals, and together we help each other get to where we want to go. To get in contact with KWYP, go to our website, which is kwyp.org. We also have an Instagram, which is on brand as a young professional, KWYP official. We also are very much on Facebook, where you can join the group and participate online through that community as well. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. However, if you want to go fast and far, go with KWYP. It's not coming, it's already here. What is it? It's your moment. The crucible that will reveal whether you are ready for the ride or destined for defeat. Your competition was built for Easy Street. Well, it ain't Mr. Rogers' neighborhood anymore. It's time for your entrepreneur side to strap in and hold tight. You have the tools, the training, and the technology. Command the moment, charge the storm. It's your time to thrive. You've got a great business out in Yuma. I've got, you're around 100 units a year. We are really pushing to, to go up for 200 transactions next year. So team of 10, you guys are gonna be just under 100 units this year with a goal to, to double that next year. What do you think you're, you're crushing right now? What are you doing better than anybody else? Well, this is one of the things that we really uh, push in the team is, you know, knowing what to say, how to say it, 
you know, what tone of voice to use to say it. And I think that uh, it's just taking advantage of the opportunities. You know, we track all our phone calls, we track all our leads, we track every single thing we do, and uh, we always try to improve. Got it, so uh, two things I heard there. One, that your conversations are number one, right? That you gotta make sure the conversation you're having matches the time and the moment, and that's key on your team. And then two, you're tracking a lot of stuff. You, you, you're, you're tracking every conversation that's had, you're tracking the leads that come in, you're tracking activity. What are you doing to track that activity? What, what tools are you using to do that? Just for the phone calls, yeah, we use a system called CallRail. That's how you use to, to be able to listen to the calls after and send okay. the call to, the, to to each agent so they can listen to it, you know, and they know, you know, if they were saying the right things. But obviously, you know, when it comes to leads, you know, just make sure that all the leads are in the system, that I make sure that, you know, they are tagged correctly. Uh, within command, we do use, you know, we have the different sections of the different stages that we use for every lead and making sure, you know, they just move them to the, to the correct, uh, you know, stage in order for us to know exactly where they are working and with each lead that we, they're working with. What's a core principle that's made your team run? I mean, you've been an uber successful agent for more than a decade now, almost two. Um, what is it that makes you guys tick? So for us, a core principle is that what we're doing is, you know, is way beyond just a commission, way beyond just a transaction. We are really transform, transforming the lives of these people, you know, their future generation. That's what the first realtor I had, you know, an encounter with did. You know, he helped me buy my first home when I was it was just me, my wife, and my little and a baby. You know, and and my life changed. My life was transformed because of that realtor. So. We are doing the same thing every day with our clients. So it's very important to us that everybody in my team understands that we're here more for just a commission. We're transforming the lives of our clients and their and their you know, it's a legacy for their generation, you know, it's it's gonna stay here. We're we're working for something that is going to outlive us. So for me that's important that everybody treats our clients that way, knowing that they're changing their life. I, I love to hear that. It sounds like you, when you bought your first home, your realtor made a big impact on you and it was life changing for you and your family. And so now you're just taking that and saying, I, I love what this person did. I want to continue to do that for all, for all the clients that we serve moving forward. What's what's one thing that, that all the everyone that's watching out there needs to know that we haven't talked about? We have a very, very long um, task list that tell us what to do in every stage. And we're using now, our administrative team is, gonna, is using now command to uh, manage that transaction. When before we, we were using like that loop and checklists and stuff, now we're like kind of getting rid of that. As we hit the new year, we're gonna only use command to be able to know exactly where the transaction is at. Hey, you know, has the inspection been ordered? Have, have we received the appraisal? Have we like emailed the lender a copy of the contract? So we have a, a very healthy list that from 20 to 30 things that we need to do in each stage of the wow. contract. So that's, that's one thing that I was using with another system before, but now we're like fully committing to using it through command. I, I love that. So you found the not only the opportunity to manage the sales pipeline for your agents and who they should be talking to and when, but now layering in, kind of getting rid of some other legacy systems to move all of your transaction processes uh, into commands, something that you guys are going to kind of power you through the new year. Yeah, and by doing that, now the agent is more um, engaged into command because now when they go back into command and they see their deal that is under contract, they can see all the steps that we're doing behind the scenes. And, uh, you know, and also we want to start using like the automated email that goes to the clients that say, hey, you know, oh, yeah. today. we've done these five things today. We did these six things today. So as the agents see that, they also see the value of working with the team and having an administrative person that is taking care of all that for them. I love that. German, thank you so much for your time today. We really, really appreciate it. And uh, we'll talk again soon. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate it too. Diversity, equity, and inclusion is an integral part of every business. We have so many agents from so many places that have so many specialties and so many things that make them so individual. We wanted to create a space where everyone could find their niche and belong. Most people build their wealth through the acquisition of real estate. And there are so many different kinds of people. Training and education are an integral part, of course, of anything. We are a learning-based company and learning how to serve a wider client base is one of our primary objectives. Everybody has a different perspective of the same thing and all of our clients aren't experiencing a transaction in the same way. By opening and expanding your mind and learning more about people and all of our differences, 
we're able to really provide specified services to all of our clients that are going to help them and give them what they need in their transaction. And we teach agents really how to use language and use advertising and marketing to get as many clients as possible. So the agents have really had a good time learning about the tools and the resources and the differences and how to grow your business through community partnerships and all the different things that we talk about in this particular community. There are two primary classes that we teach, the color of real estate and unconscious bias in real estate. If you haven't taken them, you'll wanna to go to events.kw.com. We teach them every month. Our mission is really to make sure that people, any people, whoever they are, wherever they come from, whoever they love, whatever they believe, can walk into any of our market centers and realize and understand and really feel like this is the place where they belong and they can build a thriving business. That takes each and every single one of us. Welcome back for another iteration of Market Snapshot. It's February and we have an amazing lineup for you today. Don't forget to hit subscribe though, because we'll be back every month with more information. Ruben, you did an amazing job today with Gary and the vision speech. What should our viewers take away from today? I think the main thing, Jen, is just looking at like what the year is going to do and like really what, you know, Gary's outlook was, I think is like really informative. Sure. Um, first off, home sales. We saw in January, we we're at a 4 million annualized pace. Um, annually last year, we hit about 4.1, which is, you know, one of the lowest paces yeah. we've had really ever. We felt it. Yeah. So let's hear what Gary kind of had to say about next year um, and talk about, you know, what that forecast looked like. That yellow, that projection, ignore that. This is, this is, this is what they're, they're projecting. Um, I don't know about that. It could be that. Uh, if you go back to uh, 08 and 09, that's exactly what happened. I'm gonna lay a prediction out here. My prediction is, and Tony Robbins said it, and that is you're in winter right now and it's gonna stay winter for a while. So if you were hoping that um, this year would, would give relief, um, I, don't, I don't think that's gonna happen. I, I think it's gonna be exactly the same. So we saw Gary's maybe a little bit more pessimistic than some of the forecasters, but in general, Jen, we think that we're gonna have about 4.3 million home sales next year. That's good. It sounds like we hit the bottom. Yeah, we're hoping we hit the bottom. Um, we think that you know next year we should start to see some inventory come on the market. That's really what's holding us back right now. So let's you know see what Gary had to say about inventory. Really unprecedented uh, when you look at what's happening, right? The, the inventory is is unbelievably low, right? Yeah, and something here, Gary. We see the low inventory. We saw twelve and a half percent inflation. Now this year we only saw one percent. So that tells you it's, it's a bit odd, but it's going to regress back to the mean if you look at history. So we've already seen prices starting to move back up again, and that's what we should continue to expect. Yeah, you're referring back to that point nine. That's exactly and right. Two. Yeah. 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 So we saw like last year where again, we're like right around the bottom of what we think is realistic in inventory. Okay. Um, you know, we also saw new listings slow down a lot last year. Um, 
the weird thing that's kind of happening right now, the right, is that last year prices actually were pretty slow. Yeah. Um, they, what you and Gary were talking about today was so interesting that that low inventory coupled with low demand is really kind of making our appreciation a bit stale. Yeah, you know, when we look at this annual appreciation slide, we see there's sort of a, a level of like, when we have low inventory, we should have higher home price growth, right? Right. Um, we should be regressing back to the mean, and let's hear what Gary has to say about price appreciation. This tells an interesting tale. It also shows you um, uh, what happened in, uh, uh, as, as it relates to other, other, other time periods, right? So I think what's really interesting just to note that you literally are back in this period of low, low price appreciation. The challenge is we have low supply. And when you have decent demand and low supply, you know what happens, right? Yeah. And Ruben, some of that information was a bit shocking because what I heard was that we were seeing about 12% interest or appreciation as we were going through the last few years. And then all of a sudden the brakes got hit and we were really only about 1%. I think that's why people are feeling it so much right now. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly right. We went from, you know, record appreciation really down to now we're in like some of the lowest we've had in many years. Right. And, you know, we can actually look back historically and see what has typically caused these low appreciation levels. So let's actually again go to Gary and listen to him talk about what's happened in the last really 50 to 70 years that's caused these low appreciation levels in other housing cycles. So what you're staring at is, um, kind of a historical appreciation timeline. And the, the, what we want you to notice a couple of things. One is go to, let your eye go to every spot where it says 0%. You see that? Okay, so here's what you'll know. And that is over history, what goes up comes down, what is down goes up. And absolutely, and they do this in order to continually readjust around affordability, okay? And all you're seeing here is the adjustment around affordability, around prices, right? Also want you to notice that uh, if you go to um, December of, of uh, 02, uh, I'm sorry, 82, sorry, uh, you'll notice that that recession was caused by the Fed. And then if you go to the next one, March of 91, you'll notice that recession was caused by the banking crisis. And if you go to February 09, you'll notice that that was caused by the finance community. And if you go to the current one, you'll notice it's the Fed again. So one of the statements that you've heard me make over the years, if you put up with my boring rant, um, I constantly say, that most likely it's the, it's the government that's gonna throw you into a recession or it's going to be uh, the banking community. So we saw Gary talk about the fact that the Fed raising rates is one of the top reasons why we see either negative home price appreciation or want home price appreciation come down very close to zero. And the other one was, you know, banking crises, which is something that we're always worried about. What I found interesting is watching that pattern, right? That history is repeating itself. It was always related to something financial. And in this case, the Fed, as you've taught me, is doing what they're supposed to be doing. They're doing the one thing they know how to help us control our inflation. And that's just not great for home buying right now, right? But we, we think that might correct. Yeah, that's always a challenge, right? Like they have to worry about the entire economy, not just one market, but we're exceptionally sensitive to mortgage rates. Right. So going into next year, you know, we've seen inflation come down a lot. We think sometime in the middle of the year, there's a good chance the Fed's gonna start to reduce um, their interest rates. So hopefully, you know, as we move through the second half of this year and then into 2025, we should start to see uh, mortgage rates meaningfully start to improve. Yeah. So that loosening up of mortgage rates, that loosening up of inventory as people feel more comfortable letting go of their homes, we believe that will help the market move forward from where we've been, but it doesn't sound like we're gonna be moving at a very quick pace. Yeah, that's exactly right. Everyone's still sitting on pandemic era refinancing, right? So they've got rates sub 4%. It's gonna take a little while to start to get, you know, those people moving through things again. Um, but it'll happen eventually. It will right. happen eventually. 
time heals all wounds, absolutely, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And I think that's the message we wanna make sure that all of our realtor friends out there, our real estate agent friends, as well as the buyers and sellers who might be watching this, that just like Gary always says, there's always a right time to buy the right piece of real estate. And working with your local economist of choice who understands the market and all of the things that we talked about today can help you make a great decision about whether it's the right time for you to buy or sell real estate. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. And I think right now a ton of people are looking for information, right? Yes. They want to know, can I buy? Can I sell? Um, and we saw it in some of the other, you know, patterns and sort of surveys of consumers, right? Like they're information seeking right now. And like you guys can be the source of that information. Yeah. So use this as help as you build that economist of choice muscle and join us every single month as we come back again next month for another market snapshot. Don't forget to subscribe. You sold 49 homes in the last 12 months, of which 35 of them came off of Instagram. Yeah, the first thing they tell me, like, hey, we came to you because you post really nice houses. It doesn't mean I sell them, I just post them. <laughs> so it's just a way you have to market it, right? Take me a little bit on the journey, Yulio. Take me in two or three minutes here. Take me through I'm born to I'm a realtor in two minutes or less. How did you get here today? Yes, sir. That's a great question. So uh, a little bit about my background. Uh, I started as everyone else. Uh, my parents own a Mexican restaurant. So uh, they've been owning a restaurant chain for 20 years. And I was pretty much in the, in the Mexican restaurant industry for when I was little until I was 18. So your parents own a traditional uh, Mexican restaurant and you worked in that restaurant I, with family. I worked there. I had pretty much every vacation I got from school. I was in there all summer, every weekend after <laughs> school I was there. So I was in the restaurant pretty much my whole life. You knew you didn't want to do that forever. Yeah, no, and uh, when, I, when I finished high school, you know, I was going to college and my plan was get a degree on business and marketing. That way I could help my dad branch out and, and continue a restaurant chain. But um, I wasn't passionate about the restaurants, right? It wasn't, you know, I like it and everything. I love my parents to death, but I wasn't passionate about cooking and being in the restaurant chain. So uh, that's where real estate came in. So I graduated high school. I got my license at 18 years old. And three months later, I sold my first home at 18. And then I just started from there. Why, why did you pick real estate? I mean, you, you, know, you could have done anything, man. With the kind of, I'm just guessing, the numbers you're doing, you have immense talent. What was it about real estate that, that, that blew you away? I just seen that there's, there's no limit to real estate. I, I, started, uh, I started by watching TV shows for real estate TV shows, and I started liking the flipping and stuff. And everyone says, if you want to start investing, start a realtor. So uh, I became a realtor, and now I love being a realtor. I love helping people out. The same thing I was doing at the restaurant, helping you know, helping people get the food, delivering stuff. I'm doing now real estate, but now like on a larger scale. I love that. All right, so you get into the business. Did you join KW straight away, or were you with someone else? Yes, I, I didn't interview nobody else. I um, I came with KW. I told them I didn't want to hear the story. Sign me on. I'm ready to train. And literally that week, it was a Monday, so I had ignite rolling on, and I started ignite. I was ready, and then boom, the pandemic happened. Shut down, no more Ignite. I didn't have a coach yet. Offices closed, no more open houses. Everything got canceled. So I was like, I was talking to my dad, uh, what do I do now? What'd your dad say? What was the advice he gave? He was like, just come back to work with me. You have it all planned out. Um, right now is not a good time to be a realtor. And um, I, I let that... I let that sink in for like a couple of weeks and then we, we spoke about it because he would see me every day at home. Like, hey, what are you still doing at home? You should be out there uh, networking. I know everything's closed, but go out there, take pictures of houses, find people that are out there. And I started doing that. So a uh, fun fact, um, when I used to work at the restaurant, I would deliver flyers all around the in industrial uh, wor workshops. And I, my, I, would come, I would come to tell them, hey guys, uh, let us let us sponsor your Friday meeting. Right, everyone has a, a Friday meeting at those corporate jobs, sure. and then depending on how much large tacos they got or the amount of, my dad would give me a cut. 
So I, I took that same perspective and I did it in real estate. Everything I did at the restaurant, I kind of, I put a little real estate twist to it and I did it to myself. I would do it, instead of door knocking to industrial workshops, I would do it at homes. I would do it at small businesses. And then I used to do a lot of marketing for my parents' restaurant. I would do ads and all that stuff. I started doing that on myself and I just, I progressed. Okay, so you've been in the business now less than less than two three years. years. Three years, yeah, right? three years. Two years. And you did 50 units in the last 12 months. <laughs> Yeah. So, I, so how? Like, I don't. There's not this interview is like, <laughs> how, dude? Like, if I'm sitting and I'm and I'm just a person and I'm watching this, I want you to talk to the person out there that hasn't been able to find their path yet and tell them, tell them the story, dude. How, how do I go sell 50 homes in 12 months? So, uh, my first full year, which was last year, I sold 50 units, helped 50 families out, uh, and the, my first two quarters, I was only able to sell about 15. So the first two quarters were just, it was, it was a bit slower. Uh, quarter three and four, that's where I really picked up the pace. And I sold 35 within those uh, two quarters. And it was just me by myself. I don't have, I didn't have a TC. I don't have an assistant, no showing assistant. I had nobody. Uh, and I was just, I was getting out there. I was uh, about 30 of those deals from last year came from Instagram. How do you make money using Instagram? Like walk me through it. Step one. What like help me out. So step one, uh, you really have to brand yourself. Uh, you have to switch your Instagram account to a professional account. You you want to let everyone know you're a realtor. And after that, um, I will follow twenty new people every day. I will go through my followers' accounts, go through their accounts, and just follow twenty people. I want you want to grow your database, right? You want people to follow you back. And then I will post every single day, every single day with something new, either a new construction home, uh, a home with a pool. So n- tell me about the posts that you're making, because I think we got a lot of people out there that have Instagram, but they don't know what to post. So help me out. So uh, a lot of people post like, hey, this is what you need, like a checklist or uh, pictures that have letters and stuff. But people don't want to see that. People want to see your face. So instead of posting a checklist, I will post a video. Hey, guys, it's your favorite realtor. This is one of the three things you need to buy a home, right? I will get on there and put my face because people want to people want to follow somebody and buy a home and see see them talk instead of reading a, a checklist. So I will make like like I said, I took everything from my restaurant and I brought it to my side. So my my, my parents' restaurant is really authentic. So I wanted to make my page really authentic. So that's what I did. I, I would every day I uh, had my different type of posts. On Mondays I'll, I'll post motivational quotes with a twist of real estate, um, things like that, that motivate people. Well, walk me through this. So is there a cadence over the course of the week? You post some, you post the same content on the same days each week or similar? Correct. Yeah. Uh, on Mondays, I, I, I tend to post like a really, really nice house. And I like to put a quote on there. That's on Mondays, uh, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, I usually like posting videos of properties I've done or my closings. And then okay. uh, Fridays are like my, my call to action. Say, hey guys, the weekend is here. Let's go see some homes. I'll probably take a picture with a nice house. And Saturday and Sunday, I like dedicating to new construction because everyone loves new construction. I love that. So when you say dedicated to new construction on Saturday, does that mean you're visiting a new construction model and you're walking, talk me through that. So I'm actually starting a, a new thing. It's called uh, New Construction with Elio. So it's a video series, and each week we're uploading a video at a new construction community in Houston. So it's just uh, me walking the, the community, talking about their incentives, the neighborhood. And uh, I just want to bring value to, to people and promote the neighborhood. This is so cool, Ilya. How, how old? I got to, you know, usually <laughs> you don't ever ask how, someone how old they are, but because I'm going to lie, and I'm just going to, I've been 36 now for 11 <laughs> years. I'm going to be honest with you about it. How old are you? I turned 21 in June. You, <laughs> you turned 21 in June. Yeah, I just turned 21. Oh my gosh. I can't even, man. I, you, you're turning 21 in June. You sold 49 homes in the last 12 months, of which 35 of them came off of Instagram. Yeah. So tell. <laughs> okay. So and tell I own me. Properties as well. 
Oh my gosh, man, you are you're living such a big life already. I, I, I'm, you're so inspiring to me, Elio. You're so inspiring to me. Take me now. How do I go and I actually quote unquote get a customer from Instagram? Like, I get I'm making these posts. I, I, I'm doing something Monday. I'm doing something every day. I'm following 20 new people a day. I've branded myself and I've gotten a professional page. How does it actually manifest into me being on the telephone with a consumer? When does that part happen? It's, it's just like any anything else you do, right? If you have to be really consistent about it. That's why uh, 2020 when I started, it was just me establishing who I was, right? And something I would something I tell all the new agents, if you're going to take a leap in social media, you have to do it straight for at least six months, three to six months posting every day. Uh, maybe you won't see a client pop up the same the first week they want to buy real estate, but eventually they're going to know somebody. And now from you following 20 people every day, you might have an extra thousand followers that you didn't have. And maybe 10 of those people will, Hey, actually I have, I follow a realtor that, that shows really nice houses. Cause the first thing they tell me like, Hey, we came to you cause you post really nice houses. It doesn't mean I sell them. I just post them. <laughs> and that's what everyone tells me. So it's just the way you have to market it, right? And we want to work with you because you post the nicest pools in Houston. So it, and, it's, and it works. Do they – now, are they direct messaging you in some way through Instagram? Yeah. yeah. That's so, so you're getting a direct message in Instagram and someone's saying, hey, love your – Love the stuff you're posting. What do they say? I'm, I'm here. I'm telling you. You tell me. Like, what, what are these things? So say? Uh, 10 out of 10, like, hey, Elio, I'm a first-time buyer. I want to purchase a home with X amount of time. What do I do? And I have my own template. So I just copy and paste and boom. I send them a link to get pre-approved. Once you're pre-approved, I actually meet them in person and we do our consultation. Walk me through the template. What's important about the template? So first is, hey, nice to meet you. Thank you for reaching out for your real estate needs. Uh, and then I, I next paragraph is one of the first steps for you purchasing your home is getting pre-approved. Attached to this is a checklist and a link to one of my preferred lenders. Let me know once you apply. That's it. And and that's it. And then they they then reach out because I know people get a little weird whenever you like that early on. They've never spoken to you at this point. And you're referring them to a lender. Correct. Um, and I've, I, I honestly, if they're serious, they'll apply. I follow up with them one or twice. And then they'll end up applying. But I just have so many leads coming through Instagram that if they don't apply, I can't be bugging and bugging them. Oh, my gosh, dude. What a great problem to have. How, how many <laughs> followers do you have? So when I first started in 2020, I only had 1,000 followers. Uh, now I'm, I'm up to uh, 7,600. So I've grown 6,000 followers within the last two years. And they're all authentic. Like I didn't buy them or nothing. It was just people following me because what I do. Wait a minute. What do you mean buy them? You can buy you can buy followers? Yeah. A lot of people buy their followers, but uh, they're just like bots. Like they don't engage with your feed and stuff like that. And if they're not engaging with yourself or sharing it, then what's the point um, to, to have a, a big, large amount of followers? 100%. Man, I, I love this. So – this doesn't cost, I mean, other than the time, <laughs> it, it doesn't cost any money. Uh, uh, I, Dude, I your profit one margin <laughs> must be ridiculous. Yeah, tell me. I will say one thing. I do do about four to five ads a month, and that's just to bring more followers. Just uh, I typically spend about 80 to $100 on each ad. I don't need to, but I get more followers, more likes, and people are sharing my stuff way more. Well, so I got to ask you, man, because you're balling out of control and you're doing it. You haven't even turned 21 yet. What are you learning about money and about wealth and about life now as you've been going through this journey? Because you've had a lot of success really early on. Correct. So uh, I, I'm blessed to have great parents and they've always uh, teached me to save your money and wait for opportunities. Uh, this past within the past 12 months, I've been able to purchase three properties, investment properties. I still love my parents. Thank you. I still love my parents. I, I don't see myself moving out anytime soon, but I am still buying properties. I have, I have uh, around eight units right now under my name. So what's next now? I mean, you're, 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 you're moving fast, dude, and you, you have a great model and you're using a great system. Where, where are you headed next? Uh, my my goal for this year is to, um, to close, close volume is 20 million. So far, I'm at 10. So I need to catch up 10 more. But, by the way, you're at 11. 
You're at you're at, you're at eleven million fifty two thousand nine hundred and eighteen. But who's counting? <laughs> okay, then I, I'm nine short. Okay, I'm, I'm nine million short. Um, I want to build a, a team, like a marketing team. I want to have my own podcast room, my own video guy, marketing director. I, I want to build a team surrounding what, what I do. I so that, that. That, those are my I goals. Do you, do you see, do you think you'll move into other platforms? I mean, there's the Insta, there's, there's Twitter, there's the face pages, the MySpace, as, any, in any uh, event. Do you, you said all that, not me. Do you think you'll move into any of those? Or are you just going to stay home and on, on Insta because you can print money there? So I use Instagram and Facebook because anything you post on Instagram goes to Facebook. So it's, it's the same thing. And I, I get a lot of good content from Facebook as well. It's just not as as um, as fast as Instagram. I would like to hop on TikTok, but like I said, I am a one man team, so it is kind of hard yeah. sometimes to follow up on everything. But TikTok is a really good platform to be on. It's so good, dude! I am so inspired by what you're doing, um, and I can't believe you're about to turn 21. And by the way, it's either all downhill from here, <laughs> or in, and you just peaked, or you have the most amazing 40 year career ahead of you. So either way, um, thanks for everything you're doing for KW, man. And, and thanks for everything you're doing for all these homeowners that you're helping. I'm really grateful. No, thank you. Yeah. Grab the mouse and just click here. I know you want more of this. People look up today and they go, oh my gosh, it's so expensive. And yet look, the historical trend line is 7.7%. The last um, 25 years, approximately, um, it's at uh, 6.8. You're right there at the trend line. And the reason why these slides are important is to show people this is where you are. Most people, where would, if, if you didn't bring this information, where would they get it? They would have to be so curious, they would be in there getting on Google, and they'd be, they would be saying, what's the historic average of mortgage rates? Who does that? Nobody does it. So they don't know. They don't realize that historically, this is not incredibly expensive. It's only expensive if you look back over the last 15 years. Okay. But it's not historically expensive. But Gary, if we allow them to wait for rates to come down, which may not happen that soon, like I don't think we're doing our job. I mean, we were brainstorming. We have 40% of the homes out there that are mortgage-free. And we have all of these homes that are locked into low rates. We need to tell them, well, why not That's right. keep your home, That's right. rent the home, maybe right. owner finance your free and clear home, use that revenue to finance the difference in the new interest rates. They take, it takes an expert to tell people how to move in this market. This is our time. Yeah. Again, there's plenty of business for anybody that wants to go do it. Okay? There's plenty of demand for that. But you have to find your unfair share. Imagine this. What if we were able to put all the wisdom of the millionaire real estate agent, shift the one thing, ignite in all of our playbooks into one gigantic resource li library, our version of ChatGPT. And what if we could make that available and command to connect in a chatbot format and give our agents and teams the ability to have all that information right at their fingertips. Well, that's exactly what we've been working on. It'll look something like this. One of the great things that we'll be adding uh, over time is more and more of our educational content to the library. So we'll never stop adding more to this model to make it smarter the more agent conversations that it has. There is no other real estate firm that comes even close to the amount of content and data we have. So our everyday objective, our everyday objective is to put it that information to work for you.
one has to appreciate how varied the market is in the Bahamas. The Bahamas spans over 100,000 square miles of ocean and is comprised of hundreds of islands and keys. The islands all have a level of uniqueness about them, which we look forward to introducing to the entire global Keller Williams family. I like to describe Keller Williams as a human development company that happens to be in the real estate space. It's very focused on developing the agent to be the best he or she can be in the business. It provides the tools, the technology, and the training to support all of the agents under the Keller Williams brand. And that is incredibly important to me and certainly was a major reason for me wanting to be a part of the KW family. Hi, I'm Gary Keller, and I'm here to share with you the history of our company, Keller Williams Realty. Keller Williams is unique. We put our agents first and work tirelessly to identify and meet their needs. We are simply one of the most innovative and successful real estate companies on the planet. The Keller Williams was a grand experiment in my life, and the origins of this company have their roots in my early experiences in the real estate business. On the advice of my dad, I got a degree in marketing and real estate with a specialization, particularly in real estate and insurance from Baylor University. In 1979, I graduated and came to Austin, Texas and got into the real estate business. I eventually went into management and because I loved teaching and helping people and achieve their business and life goals, I decided to make a career of leadership and management training. By the time I was 26, I was the vice president of expansion at Austin's largest real estate company at that time. And then I quit. The vision of the company I was with was that their agents worked for the company. And I'd constantly tell the owner at that time that I believed the company worked for the agent. And if they just focused on building the agents and treating them right, then they would build the company bigger than they ever dreamed. Companies are nothing more than people. People create everything inside an organization and outside. And what's going to make us better in the long term is the way that our people think. Our goal is to tap the way people think, take advantage of that, that thought process and put it to use for everybody. So in 1983, the experiment began. I left where I was and I partnered with Joe Williams, great guy, and we started Keller Williams Realty with just a handful of agents and some folding tables and chairs. By the end of the first year, we had netted over $100,000 and put it in the bank. In two years, we grew to over 70 associates and had become Austin's largest single office real estate company and number 10 in the market overall. Mm, then the market fell out. It was 1986. We shrunk from over 70 associates to below 40 associates, and although we were still profitable, a new competitor moved to town and five of my top 10 associates, plus my entire administrative staff, walked out the door. To meet the new challenges in the market and stand up to my competition, I knew I had to reinvent Keller Williams. True to my beliefs, I started with agents. Gathering my top 13 associates, I asked this question. How can we run the company in such a way that you achieve everything that you want and at the same time, we achieve everything we want. And here's what we came up with. The best possible commission structure we could think of to be treating the agents like business partners, to profit share with access to the financial information, formalized input into how the business should be run through an agent leadership council, and supportive management who consults and promotes teamwork, the highest level of training we could think of. And we implemented these ideas in less than two years, our company became number one in our market. Positive, never to be relinquished yet. Putting agents first was obviously a successful model. So we took it even further by devising a plan to organize top agents into a series of agent leadership councils, formally at the local, city, regional, and international levels. Most people think we're crazy when we share with them that we've actually turned the entire company's decision-making process over to our associates in tandem with our managers. But we have. The Agent Leadership Council, the ALC, was set up so that our salespeople could directly impact most of the decisions and all of the decisions that impact them. Now, this revolutionary step gave Keller Williams tremendous credibility and was the catalyst for more actions aimed at putting agents in the driver's seat. Our open books policy, standardized accounting procedures, and published results, the result was growth. We began franchising in 1991 and expanded to Canada in 1998. By working one-on-one -on -one with masterminding with hundreds of top agents from across the country, we created a set of models that became the foundation of my first book, The Millionaire Real Estate Agent, which I published in 2004. The book hit a nerve, found an audience. 
There were like-minded agents all over North America who found the answers they'd been looking for in that book. In the second half of the decade, as the crazy run-up in real estate prices started to backfire, Keller Williams Realty and our associates were uniquely positioned to seize the shift as an opportunity for growth. You see, Keller Williams Realty got its start during a rotten real estate market, and the hard-fought lessons that we learned during those years have really stayed with us. So we published Shift, which was a follow-up to The Millionaire Real Estate Agent. In it, we set forth a 12-point action plan for how top agents tackle really tough times. Shift became a national New York Times bestseller as our company and our agents took it up a notch, outpacing the market and proving that the market doesn't dictate whether or not we succeed. It only tells us how we're going to succeed. We launched the Luxury Homes Division, which extended our reach into that segment of the market. We created Keller Williams Commercial, which is now the fastest growing commercial real estate company in North America. Pursuing our dream to bring the Keller Williams opportunity to the world, we opened Keller Williams worldwide and have laid the groundwork for overseas expansion. Ensuring that our associates have what it takes to serve their clients and run their businesses with technological tools that are unmatched in the industry, we responded to the insights of the most tech-savvy associates among us and developed eEdge, one paperless loop for lead management, contact management, marketing, and transaction management. We're not a company that sits still. And it's all because Keller Williams Realty is in the hands of smart, determined, forward-thinking agents such as you. We're here to serve you. And we're very proud to be in business with you. And we're so glad you've decided to join us on this unbelievable ride. Our technology team is working on an AI model that will use advanced algorithms to literally predict the future. What that means is that this technology will have the ability to review your contact databases and predict the likelihood of a contact to buy or sell a property. So the idea is that we'd assign a probability score to contacts in the database. This has the added benefit, Mark, of potentially allowing early detection of off-market properties that are likely to be placed for sale. What we really want to do is above all else is change the name of the game for all of you so that you can get into conversations with your contacts before they make the decision to talk to somebody else. In short, and this is the most important thing, we want to work really hard to make sure your data works as hard as you do, period. So one of the statements that you've heard me make over the years, if you put up with my boring rant, um, I constantly say that most likely it's the, it's the government that's gonna throw you into a recession or it's going to be uh, the banking community. One of the two are, are gonna most likely be the culprit. So you wanna watch what's going on, okay? Because they, they'll tell you what's fixed to happen. Right now, you're in one being caused by the Fed. By the way, the Fed wants us to come right up on the border of a recession. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Now, that's an economic recession because right now, real estate is in a recession. You are in a recession, but the economy's not in a recession. So as long as they can keep us in a recession and keep the economy out of a recession, they're going to keep rates high. Yes or no? That's right. Yes. What they don't want is February 09. That's so unprecedented that we lost so much home value, and that's such a huge part of the average American's wealth. They can't let it crash like that again. So they will act before they let prices drop for multiple years in a row. Businesses and careers are really built in tough times, not easy times, right? When the market recedes or the market goes flat, if you can hold your ground during that time period, you are set up for the next five to 10 years you will make your money, no matter what industry you're in, by the way, if you can do it. If you just ride it and you suffer along with everyone else, mm, uh, not so good, by the way, okay? So you have to find a way to hold your own during this. Hey, welcome to the August 
Asian Leadership Council meeting. So from the very beginning, it was very natural that when we would have an agent uh, within the Southwest Market Center that was experiencing illness, that we would all help out. John and Martha Squires were the couple that, if they found out you had a death in the family, they were there with you. Martha Squires came to Mary and said, we have a lot of need in our office with illness and death. Could we do something for our agents? Ultimately, the idea was brought forth to Mo, who was the CEO at the time, I believe, and she was just blown away by this idea of the KW Cares in the Southwest Market Center, and she wanted to take it national. So at that point, she underwent an effort to, uh, with the IRS to make it a, an official 501c3, and we achieved that status in 2003. I'm not exactly sure if natural disasters was a part of the initial plan for KW Cares. However, it is the first need that came across um, from the nation. We were having major catastrophes that we needed to come in and help with. There was a fire, the Joplin tornado, or hurricanes like Hurricane Katrina. Keller Williams raised $5 million and gave away $5 million for Katrina, and that was more than NAR did that year. And we uh, knew from then that we had to be bigger and do more. You need to make sure that you plan all of your evacuation routes. This is very important. It's been exciting for us to see how that's grown across the world now, because it, it's truly an expression of our cornerstone value, our culture within Keller Williams. Whether it be that we give someone a grant because they have medical bills, because they're in a fight for their life for cancer, or we give someone a grant because they've been displaced, because their home was destroyed by a tornado or a wildfire or a hurricane. It's those times when KW Cares can step in and shine some light into their darkness that really matters. So when we say that Keller Williams and KW Cares is about family helping family, this is what it's all about. And this is why we all should be so proud to be part of Keller Williams.